I didn't try it. I should have tried it. I am now called to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor L. Who's this? Here. Vice Mayor Terrapani? Here. Commissioner Siever? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Commissioner Donovan? Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Dave uh, Parkinson from the Akron Connect. If you please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening on behalf of the people of Tarpon Springs. We ask that you guide and direct us tonight as we go about the business of leading this great community. We ask your continued blessing upon our first responders, those selfless persons who continuously run toward danger and never away from it. The men and women in our community whose job it is to protect the lives of our citizens. We also thank you this evening for the community leaders that are here tonight. We ask that you give good insight and help them to make wonderful decision-making responsibilities. Thank you also for the members of our community that are here this evening and we ask that you bless their families and guide this evening's discussion. We pray for our country and the men and women who selflessly give of themselves and at times they give of their lives so that we might enjoy continuing to live in a country where freedom isn't just an idea or a hope, but rather freedom is a reality. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you hear our prayer tonight. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our uh, BOC meeting tonight. We will start our uh, meeting tonight with the public comments of the items that will not be discussed tonight. If anyone has any comments, please come forward to the podium. State your name and your address for the record. You'll be given four minutes. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, City Manager, and Commissioners. Mayor Alahuzas, did the city send a letter of congratulations to Nikita Lulias, who is bringing great honor on us on the City of Tarpon Springs this weekend, congratulating him from the City of Tarpon Springs with your signature and the signature of the uh, commissioners. Have we done that yet? This letter went out the first day. What, say it again? I'm ready to send that out. You sent it out. Did you also give a letter of safe passage to the community of Tarpon Springs? Uh, government does do that, especially for young people, elderly people who are going to as an entourage to, vi to witness this great uh, event in England, did the city or did you give them a letter of safe passage? No, we did not. You still have time tomorrow. It's very nice to give the community where this is being held from our community to accept our residents from Tarpon Springs with a letter of safe passage. It used to be very common in the 80s and the 90s to do that. So I'm requesting, if at all possible, have one, sign it with our seal, and give it to the uh, church office to take with them. I think it would be very well appreciated to the mayor of that community, being that we have a young man from Tarpon Springs, Nikita Lulius. He has a title. He is now the Archbishop of the Greek Church, or the Greek uh, Archdiocese for the area of England. And we're very proud. He grew up in Tarpon. He's been in China. He's been all over the world. And the patriarch saw enough in him to dispose, to give this great honor to him and his family, and not just the Greek community, the entire community of Tarpon Springs. So that would be very nice from one mayor to the next to accept our citizens with open arms and graciousness. Thank you. Good idea would do that. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yeah. 
My name is Annie Dabbs. I reside at 803 South Distance Avenue. And my comments is on item 13. I realize that there are procedures and I'm speaking early on this item. Uh, Mrs. Depp, uh, you're gonna be talking those comments later with the item. You wanna wait for that? Oh, you won't, okay. If you would, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Do we have any comments that, for, I, for anything that it has not going to be discussed tonight? Thank you. The uh, first item on the agenda is a proclamation for the Americans with Disabilities Act Awareness Day. The proclamation reads, the city of Tarpa Springs, Florida, proclamation, whereas the Americans with Disabilities Act, it was passed in July 26, 1990 to ensure the civil rights of citizens with disabilities. And whereas the ADA has expanded opportunities for Americans with disabilities by reducing barriers and changing perceptions and increasing full participation in community life. And whereas throughout the year, on the anniversary of July 26 of the Americans with Disabilities Act, the city of Tarpa Springs recognizes the uh, progress that has been made by reaffirming the principles of equality. Now, therefore, I, Chris Alahuzas, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Tarpa Springs, Florida, to hereby recognize July 26, 2019 as the Americans with Disabilities Act Awareness Day. We will mail this proclamation. Are there any commission comments on this item? Are there any public comments on this item? I hear none, thank you. Item number two on the agenda is Explore Tarpa Springs Tourism Video. We're presented by Karen Lemons and Diane Wood. Thank you, Karen Lemons, Economic Development Manager. Um, we launched the Explore Tarpon Springs Tourism Marketing Campaign back in April. Um, it started with the creation of a logo. We developed a website, explorearpensprings.com. We contracted for two billboards, one on I-75 and one on I-4. And we've got digital ads and ad hard copy ads in newspapers and magazines. We launched a photo contest, and we did a 90-second tourism video um, that we're going to be seeing tonight for the first time. Um, the big picture on this video was a tourism video that had the theme of the Tarpon Springs you know and love, and there's so much more to explore, which goes in with our Explore Tarpon Springs logo. Um, I want to thank the entire city, um, the mayor and the board of commissioners for allocating the funding for us to do this, all of the residents. Um, and visitors and everybody who came out the day of filming to be unpaid uh, volunteer actors and also everybody who helped lead up to it. There were a lot of logistics involved with getting things ready for the day of the filming and all that hard work made um, the day of filming very successful. And so we're proud to um, show this tonight and especially proud that this is all locally driven. Everything that you see in here is local and all the people um, involved in it were local. So with that, uh, we'll show the video.
that's it. Uh, it's 90 seconds long. Uh, we're going to be using it for our website, our, our various websites that we have. We're going to be editing it into commercials that we can put on TV. We're going to be sharing it um, on social media and with other organizations, the chamber and the merchants, um, anybody who would like to use it and help spread the word about what a great city Tarpon Springs is. Um, Thursday of this week at 6 o'clock at the Heritage Museum, we're having a, a public reception where we're going to be showing the video um, again publicly, and then we're having a photo exhibition where we'll be um, releasing the award winners of our photo contest. We had about 300 entries in the photo contest and exhibiting those. So it'll be a fun night to come out and again to celebrate um, all the great things in the city. Chair, thank you. Congratulations. This is uh, not only for the video, but also on the whole tourism campaign. Uh, all the things that you guys are doing for the, uh, for the campaign is excellent. Um, marketing is so important to us because tourism is our main industry and then drives our local economy. Uh, on the video, it's 90 seconds. Is that possible that can be reduced to 30 seconds so we can actually broadcast that in uh, TV channels? Yes. That'll be good. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any uh, commission comments? Yes, thank you, Karen. As you know, I've always supported more marketing for our city. Uh, as a tourist destination, we need to uh, do all we can to bring people into Tarpon and, and uh, to help our, our businesses, too. Um, so I'm very excited that you've finally gotten some funding uh, to, to launch this Explore Tarpon Springs. Okay. Um, I think that uh, maybe we could work with the Merchants Association or the Chamber to partner for the commercial, because I think uh, they're, both those organizations are willing to... Uh, to help out with a commercial, so I'm looking forward to, to that moving forward and, and hope we can spend more marketing dollars next year. Thanks. Vice Mayor Terrafe. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Karen. The video uh, looks great, and I know that there were a lot of efforts from not just you, but other members uh, of staff and from the public that collaborated <laughs> to make this happen. Um, I, I wholeheartedly agree with uh, Commissioner Sieber that we need to focus more efforts and, and some additional spending on marketing our beautiful city and bringing more people here to, to share its beauty and all we have to offer. Um, I am curious, though, I'm sure that, you know, after a whole day of shooting, there's a lot more footage that is unseen. Um, and maybe some of that footage would be usable in other areas or in, on creating another video. So I was wondering if maybe you could share with the commission in some format a way to view uh, more of the video that was shot or more clips that we have so we can try and, you know, continue to stretch the money. Yeah, sure. We spent, it was four hours that day, um, so they took a lot of, of footage, a lot of different scenes and shots. We tried to capture the essence of it here. I think we did. Um, but yes, there's additional raw footage, so we, we have ability to use that. We own it, so we can look take a look at all that, too. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Carr? Thanks, Mayor. I just w Karen, I just want to say thank you. Great job on the video and working with uh, the marketing dollars that you had allocated for this year. I know in the proposed budget, there's about 65000 total for this year in marketing dollars, so it's exciting to see as well uh, for the coming budget. Uh, again, thank you to all the staff that was involved. I know it was a, a whole staff effort, and it's great to see you all had a great day. Thanks. Yeah, to echo what the other commissioners have said, thank you very much for all your hard work on this, um, you and the rest of the staff, and uh, thank you to all the residents and the visitors that came out and were part of the commercial. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Any public comments on this item? Here now. Thank you, Karen. Okay, we now go to the uh, consent agenda. <coughs> Number three is the minutes, A, 28th, 2019, regular session. Four is the satisfaction release of liens. <coughs> Number five is the attorney fees, trask and dyno, invoice July 4th, 2019. And B is Johnson and Johnson, invoice 4679, 4680, and 4681. Six is the special events. A is the Labor Day Sponge Ducks Arts and Crafts uh, Show. August 31st through uh, September 2nd, 2019. B is the Rotary Triathlon, September 7th, 2019. And C is the Homecoming Parade, September 3rd, 2019. September 13th, 2019. Number seven is the award file, number 1901, 29 and 
uh, CAD computer out of their dispatch, RMS and miscellaneous services. And number eight is to approve change uh, to the uh, RFP number 160032PCM, life and long term disability. Any of the items that you'd like to pull? Let's have a couple comments. Okay. Anything? Okay. Well, Commission Collins, we'll start with you, Commission Collins. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I, one thing I really love about Tarpon Springs is the homecoming parade. It really brings out the whole community and the fact that it goes down our heart of our downtown and then out to the high school. And it, it's great to see the support that the town comes out and supports us um, as a whole community. There's a lot of individuals and residents that never left Tarpon Springs or came back to Tarpon Springs. They grew up going to school here. I know we have multiple people on the board that went to Tarpon High and, or also grew up in this area. So. Um, I love seeing the homecoming parade. It's one of the things that you uh, you see on movies, and it's really a true life here in Tarpon Springs. So uh, excited to see that. Also, I believe Vice Mayor brought this up as one of the items in one of our past meetings, and it was supported by the rest of the board too, was adding um, additional coverage for the employees, um, life insurance, and long-term disability. And it's a minimal cost for the city, but at this time it really increases the um, – the, the death benefit in the event something happens to our employees. So I'm encouraged to see that there's something additional there for the families. Um, Lord willing, nothing happens to them while they're still in their working ages, but we've got extra protection there for them as well. Thank you. Thanks. Any other commission comments? No. Are there any public comments of the items, items three through eight? Here none. The chair will detain the motion. Move motion. to approve. Second. And roll call, please. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Terrapani? Yes. Mayor Lahousis? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we now go to the item number nine is to authorize city manager to execute the DR 424 staff report, Mr. Liqueurs. Again, as we talked about and we do every year, this is the maximum that we can set for the millage rate. I know we had a budget meeting we talked about possibly reducing that but um we still have another budget meeting to go and we have the public hearings to go so my recommendation is that you adopt this at the 5.42 which means that would be the maximum that you could go to and then obviously during the budget process you can lower it however you see fit um but again once we set this number you can't raise it so that would be my recommendation for tonight um to approve that Thank you, Mr. Liqueur. As Mr. Liqueur stated, the, uh, uh, the DR-424 sets the highest millage, which is the current rate, a 5.42 mil. But it was my recommendation in the last budget workshop to reduce the millage from 5.42 to 5.37. So that will be discussed during the next uh, workshop. <coughs> any commission comments? Are there any public comments on this item? Here none. Uh, Chair will obtain a motion. motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Dahlman? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Terrapani? Yes. Mayor Alhusis? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Next is item number 10 is to authorize execution of amendment to the senior microtransit agreement with the Panela Suncoast Transit Authority, the PSTA. Mr. Liqueurs? Yes, there's two things we want to accomplish uh, in this agreement. Obviously, it's to extend the date, which would expire. The second thing is we're, we're seeing an issue with the ridership, and I think it may have to do with the criteria that we're using for PSTA's criteria for um, financial. So what we're adding on there, the addition you see in there is the ability to review hardships of seniors and, you know, that threshold, you know, you can be a little above the threshold, the threshold's low. I'm, I, I can't remember off the top of my head what that threshold is, but um, I think it's eliminating a group of seniors that are in need, and I think it'll help increase the ridership. So that's the two things this does, uh, extend the date. Um, we got plenty of money um, from the hospital's money towards this to, to finance it through the, through the next year. And uh, again, with that, with the ability to review people, seniors on hardships, I think we'll be able to increase the ridership and the use of it and spreading the word for it. So that's what we're asking in this amended contract. Thanks, Mr. Licurious. 
as Mr. Lacunas uh, stated, uh, we're requesting to extend the agreement with the PSTA. This is a program that uh, Mr. Lacunas and I will work very hard to bring to Tarpa Springs to provide transportation for the seniors. And uh, we requesting to extend this program. And also like to have this opportunity to thank the hospital, the Advent Health of North Pinellas for sponsoring this program and actually pay for the program to provide transportation for our seniors. So thank you to the hospital and thank you to all of you for supporting this program. Vice Mayor Penn. Vice Mayor Tom Penn. Thank you. Uh, I just want to state my support for this project and thank you, Mayor, and the other commissioners who are involved in, uh, you know, driving this uh, this funding agreement, so to speak, an initiative, uh, if you will, something that you've been working on for a long time is trying to provide some uh, ridership for our for our elders, Mayor. Um, being that I'm not as familiar with it, uh, relatively new to this term on the board, uh, Mr. City Manager, can you give a little bit of background as far as what you're talking about regarding restricting the ridership? What and like in some more detail on why what we're opening up to make ridership in theory expand. Well, we were look, when we were looking at criteria, we were looking, um, we decided on what the PSDA um, decides on um, for the level of income, which is low to be able to ride their buses. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, I think one of the problems is there are seniors that are just above that threshold. And again, we are starting the program out to see some of the examples I think we've seen is, for instance, you know, whatever it is, say it's 750, you know, seniors do get checks of 780 a month, 800, or what is just above that. You know, since that's the only criteria, they wouldn't be eligible to PSDA to the program. So what this would do is then be able to say what their hardship is. So maybe they make fifty dollars over the monthly rate, but they're seniors, they have no family, they have no transportation. Mm -hmm. That way, they could submit what their hardship is, and it can be evaluated to increase the program. I think that's going to get some people that need the program. And again, they're not people that get a lot of money more than the level PSDA does, but I think that'll capture some of the seniors that'll do that. So that's why. So it could be other see. hardships as well. It could be yes. a disability hardship. I Disability. Mean, I mean, you don't you don't get to ride the bus if you don't. I mean, you can have all the money in the world and still yeah. ride the bus. Yeah. So why why limit it to the seniors? I don't think that makes sense. So I'm glad to hear that we're amending this agreement to try and uh, create more ridership hardship. and base. Yeah, hardship exactly. Yeah. More ride, increased ridership. Make it a little easier. For sure. Yeah. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I'm super grateful for uh, Advent Health North Pinellas to sponsor this uh, as a whole. I just want to remind the board and the public that the taxpayers of the city of Tarpon Springs pay over $3 million a year in ad valorem taxes to the PSTA with limited services in Tarpon Springs. Tarpon Springs helps subsidize the Jolly Trolley, and they also have found a sponsorship for this program that the mayor helped develop and the board supported, which I'm in full support. Uh, but I would like to see more support from the PSTA for more of these items as well moving forward. Uh, I just want to put that out there as a reminder that um, we don't get as many services as we should. Thanks. Thank you. Commission Donovan. Yeah, I think this program works best when it's as inclusive as possible to help out our seniors. So I just wanted to thank the mayor and our city staff for working hard on this, getting this expanded, and I'm uh, excited to see the usage go up. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? I hear none. Uh, chair will detain the motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Commissioner Receiver? Yes. Vice Mayor Chair Panny? Yes. Mayor Alhusis? Yes. Item number 11 is to increase the file number 170109CCM utilizing Omnia Partners, formerly known as the U.S. Communities Purchasing Alliance, contract number 15, JLP0234, air conditioning products, installation services, and related products and services. Staff report, Mr. Liquor. Yes. Um, the only thing I want to adjust in that memo is just for tonight. Um, I'd like you to approve the emergency purchases for the public safety in the Safford House. The approximate is 47000 so I'd ask for tonight you approve the $15,000. Uh, right after our last meeting and stuff, we lost the air condition at the Safford House, which would have been under my powers of emergency to do, but we also 
have an air handler issue at the police department. Um, that takes a four to six week lead time, which necessitated the emergency. Um, there's not a memo in the backup. I'll make sure Chief Cochin sends you the documentation, the emergency need for that. Um, so despite this saying, increase in 97, I'd just like you to increase it $50,000 since I've already authorized the, uh, the emergency purchase of those two. And then I'll come back to you because there are some other expenses that we're going to have that's going to go over, but I want to, I want to get a little more information before I bring that to you. So quest tonight's just for the two emergency, the Safford house was when it's completely out in the air handler at the, at the public safety building. Thank you. I just want to, uh, say that uh, the manager has the authority to do that based on the uh, Tarper Springs Court of Ordinance Section 24 to Emergency Purchase that uh, the city manager may declare an emergency and exist the robotics expand but no more than $100,000 for any good services causes such an uh, emergency without a comparative bidding. So Mr. Lepers it's right there. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, I had some notes in my backup after reading this uh, that this is something that I would generally, I mean, I understand that there's some emergency circumstances, so I'm good with the 47,000 uh, or 50, whatever you want for the emergency yeah. stuff. But moving forward, this is something that I want to see rebid. Um, we, we are from the last meeting. Right, uh, right. Th there are items. So that's there. what I'm saying. So, yeah. so I was tonight, I was not going to be prepared to approve the 97. I was going to do the 47 given that it's an emergency, but the additional 50 and moving forward, on something like this, this is the exact, this is the type of contract that I want to see rebid. Yep. So I'm good with the 47, unless you need the 50. I just, that just, I mean, that's the problem. Right. I just want 3000 No problem. Dollars I'm good with the 50, but moving forward, I yep. want to see stuff like this rebid. Yeah. Thank you. No? I just want to, oh, sorry, sorry, I just want to say I agree with Vice Mayor. Um, based on our last meeting, I, I feel like we're coming back to this, but uh, I would like to see this rebid as well, and, and uh, I'm, I'm approving the funding tonight. Commission Donovan. No, I just wanted to clarify. So then our, our new motion tonight would just be approving the emergency funding. The emergency. And not the, okay. Right, not the other one. Are there any public comments on this item? <clears throat> I need a motion. Move to approve $50,000 of emergency funding for HVAC uh, systems. Second. And roll call, please. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Terrapani? Yes. Mayor Alahuzis? Yes. I know number two, all of this to authorize the city attorney to file foreclosure proce uh, procedures on the uh, 4518 East Lime Street, Suite A. Mr. City Attorney, would you please present this item? Before you, you've got a request for foreclosure of this property at 518 East Lime Street. There are actually a number of units, more than just uh, Suite A, which is one of the units. It's the entire property. The property has been deemed unhabitable. It's a major source of complaints in the area. The backup will show you the state of the building itself, the number of photographs and, and so forth. Also in your backup is a lot of uh, information that the code enforcement department has provided you relative to the criminal activity that has transpired over the last three years at this address there have been over 400 calls associated with this address um, over the past three years um, and there's also additional backup talking about the individuals that have been involved in either managing the property or now owning the property um, this matter was brought before the Code Enforcement Board um, at the last meeting to request their authorization to begin foreclosure. Uh, the Code Enforcement Board did, in fact, give that authority. The outstanding liens are in excess of $110,000 on the property. It is obviously not homesteaded. And again, it is uninhabitable as it is currently um, shown in the photographs. So I'm asking for your authority to begin foreclosure proceedings. The ultimate goal here is to have the property demolished um, to avoid um, any further use of that building. In addition to that, stop the criminal activity that has been occurring. So I'm asking you for your authority to foreclose. Are there any commission comments? Commission Donovan. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. City Attorney. I just wanted to um, ask you to elaborate a little bit on the steps that we take to reach out to the owner of the property, um, you know, before we go through this process. 
So the property uh, pursuant to the state statute, the property owner is noticed by way of a notice of violation. Uh, the notice of violation provides for a compliance date. If it's not complied with, then it goes to a code enforcement board hearing. The code enforcement board hears the testimony and evidence relative to the property. In this case, the property owner and the um, manager appeared at the code enforcement board hearing, presented their evidence. The code enforcement board uh, found the violations existed and ordered the fine to be paid. Subsequent to that, there is a reach out um, for the property owner to bring the property into compliance by me. I have had several conversations with a number of individuals associated with the property, including two different attorneys. Um, and I was unsuccessful in getting the property owners to bring the property into compliance, and it was unsuccessful to receive any type of settlement offer to settle the matter either. So it's just kind of pushing us to the point where to get the property uh, into compliance, we're going to have to do it. All right. Thank you. Any other commission comments? Are there any public comments or this item? No, I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Terrapani? Yes. Mayor Alhuzas? Yes, thank you. Mm. Item number 13 is to authorize city attorney to, fire, to file a foreclosure proceeding for uh, 500 East Oakwood Street. City Attorney, if you please present this item. This is one of the properties that was brought forward by city staff as being one of those properties that has been in violation for a number of years. There's an outstanding code enforcement lien on the property of over $100,000. Um, it is a source of, um, in addition to complaints, uh, possible uh, safety aspects related to the structure itself. Um, every time that there is a storm, a heavy storm, pieces of the building fly off into neighboring properties. You can see from the photographs that are in your packup, um, the state of the building itself. Um, and in addition to that, you'll also see some staff, uh, staffing relative to the attempts, uh, relative uh, to speaking with the church member that was um, in control of the property for a number of years and has been unsuccessful to get that person to bring the property into compliance. Um, there was an attempt to convey the property um, a couple of, actually five years ago. Uh, there is a quick claim deed in your package that you can see where some individual tried to convey the property to another individual. That deed uh, is ineffective because of the fact that it wasn't, um, it wasn't filled out properly, it didn't have the proper names of parties and so forth, and so it's an ineffective deed. Um, and therefore, the property still remains in the name of Good Spirit Music Ministries, which has been a defunct corporation uh, for many years. So I'm asking for your authority to begin foreclosure proceedings on this pr property to get it into compliance uh, because there has been no ability to get the property owner to do that at this point since the corporation is defunct and no longer exists. Thank you. Uh I was advised by a concerned citizen that this property has a historic significance. So we need to be, we'll keep that in mind. Are there any commission comments? I'd just say that I'd like to hear what Mr. Stapp yeah, does we'll, this thing. After that. Any commission comments? <laughs> Public comments? Ms. Depps? I would also note for the record that Mrs. Dabbs is on the Code Enforcement Board and so she um, I believe she was involved in this case back in 2017 when it was heard. She may be able to address that issue. My name is Annie Dabbs, and I reside at 803 South Distance Avenue. Um, this building at 500 East Oakwood Street was built as a church according to the Pinellas County tax records, it was built in 1950. So it's pretty close to 70 years old. It does have a lot of history. I don't have all of that tonight to present, but what I do want to bring to the city's attention is that this was a church, a historical building, and I realized that there are procedures to come before 
of the word demolition come up, but should demolition come up, I would like to ask the city to consider this as a historic building in the Union Academy neighborhood of Toppin Springs and restore it to a cultural center where it can be used for a variety of events. Now, should this come to focus, this would be the very first building in the city of Toppin Springs, in the Union Academy neighborhood, identified as historical. There have been many others, but they are torn down now. And I can remember when there was talk about the Masonic Hall, that was a historical building that should have been kept. It housed the Masonic family, the Royal Arch Masons, the Eastern Stars, and many other fraternal organizations, but it's gone now. So that's why I'm asking that this historical building be restored, identified as historical, and turned into a cultural center to be used by the community of Toppin Springs as a whole. Uh, looking at the pictures, it may look beyond repair, and I'm not an expert on restoration, but I do know this. I've seen worse building, have toured them in Toppin Springs, and they have been restored. So that is why I'm asking that this particular building, this church, be for the city to give all consideration to restoring this building, identifying it as historical in nature, which it is. And also, there is a lot of history behind the person who I was in charge of this building for some time, the musician, uh, Billy Emerson, longtime resident. And as far as taking care of the building and not keeping up with the fine, <laughs> Billy Emerson is probably 91 years old. So he's physically, physically, he cannot, both physically and financially. He cannot pay the city the fine to keep this building. And in the procedure of foreclosing, then it would go to the city. So that is why I am asking to give consideration to the history of this building restored so that it could be a cultural center put to good use in the community for all of Toppin Springs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dare. Any other public comment? Tina Bukovalis, 115 Athens Street. Um, I wasn't prepared to come speak about this, but I am very happy that this came up at an evening when uh, I am here. I very much support Annie's suggestion that this actually be preserved. And like her, I know that all, all, there are a few buildings that are beyond repair. I also know that the city has not had a very good record in preserving the history of its African-American community, which was here since the very beginning of the city. What's more, I think a lot of you know William Emerson, Reverend William Emerson, who received the Florida Folk Heritage Award for Lifelong Achievement. Other than Nikitas Lulius, he's probably the most nationally and internationally known citizen to ever come out of Tarpon Springs. He was prominent in the music industry back in the 50s and 60s for his compositions. He was signed by Sam Phillips at Sun Records in Nashville. Memphis. He helped teach Elvis Presley uh, 
how to dance by taking him to uh, the black clubs in the area. He then went up to Chess Records where he was the operations manager. He also had his own label, Tarpon Records. Um, he was enormously successful and well-known, penned many hits that you may have known if you're of a certain age, and then gave it up to come back to Tarpon, become a reverend, and um, take care of his mother here. Also, as, as Miss Dabb says, well, he's in his 90s, a little bit more than 91, failing physically, financially, mentally, He'd hate that if I said that, but he does not have the wherewithal to take care of this, although he very much wanted to start his own congregation. So this would be a wonderful asset to our historic preservation efforts in this community if the city could consider taking it on. Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. As you know, I'm all for historic preservation. I'm up here preaching it all the time. All of you are historic. We want you remembered. This building, has the city done any research on the historic significance of this building? Have you done any research on getting grants to preserve this building if it falls into the historic realm? City manager, anything? Have we done any of that yet? No. If you call Tallahassee, there are areas where you can get funds to save some of these buildings. Before you condemn this building and tear it down, let's see what we can do with it for the community and see if we can get any money to help restore. We've lost too much historic in Tarpon Springs, and Tarpon is known as a hi famous historic city throughout the country, so we need to look into this. I don't know what you have based this on. I didn't know this was up, coming up tonight. I didn't mean to speak about it. I wasn't prepared. But I do know that there are ways to get money for historic preservation if it is proven that it is a historic building. And this gentleman that built it was on national news. And he put Tarpon on the map through the national news of all his accomplishments. And I think we need to look into this for the community to see if we can save it. 1950 wasn't long ago, but if it, we can get the proof on it that it is historic and he did do all this, I think it would be to our betterment to try to do something with that. But that's your decision to make. But let's not try to lose too much historic pres and preserve what we have, because once it's gone, as I tell you every meeting, you don't get it back. How many of you knew that Ray Charles used to sing here in Tarpon on Saturday nights years ago? Really? Down at the old Johnny Dollar Bar and nightclub when he was young. None of you know that. He came to Tarpon many times to sing. And uh, that's historic to us. It's not documented. He used to be in Tampa singing on the corners, and that's how he got over here. So some of these places we have to save because of the historical value to it. Thank you, and I commend Mrs. Dabbs for coming to the commission to try to save that building. Thank you. Mr. Trash? Yeah, I just wanted to respond to all that. Those are all good points to be made. So the process would start with you um, authorizing the foreclosure. If we're successful, the court would enter a judgment, the court would set a sale date, and then ultimately the property would be sold. The city would have a credit for the purchase of the property up to the dollar amount of its judgment which will be about $110,000, $120,000. Obviously, in my mind, nobody is going to bid that amount, so you'll have a credit on the property. You'll be ultimately the purchaser of the property, and then once you have possession of it, then we'll come back to you, um, and we'll get some direction from uh, the commission as to what you want to do with it. Um, but this is the first step in the process. If you decide you want to demolish it, fine. If you decide you want to rebuild it, repair it, fine. But this is the first step to get control and ownership of the property since it's just failing every single day that goes by. So I'm asking for your authority to begin that process. Mr. City Attorney, you have my support to go forward with the uh, process to uh, uh, follow for the uh, foreclosure. And uh, I'm looking forward, if we successful, to uh, get the ownership of this building to uh, preserve and rebuild it. Yeah, that, that was exactly my question. Once we go through with this process or your recommendation and, and we own uh, this property and we can go back and look at 
uh, the value and the historical value of this property and, and decides which way we're going to go. Right. <coughs> Thank right. you. Yeah. Vice Mayor Terrapin. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm for exploring the historical value of it. Uh, my question uh, for you, Mr. Attorney, is uh, who, I know that there was some back and forth regarding improperly recorded deeds. Do we know who the, who the owner of record is? So the owner of record is, um, let me just go through it and you can pull it out. It's Good Spirit Music Ministries Incorporated. And who's the manager there? Mr. Emerson. Okay. So he was Mr. Emerson, he, is, he's still alive, right? Yes. Okay. So my question is, as it relates to, if, if he doesn't have the money to, to pay the fine, uh, can we just do like a deed in lieu, in lieu of foreclosure? So the answer to the question is, is that maybe approach that we want to take, but until I'm authorized to do the foreclosure, I don't order the title search. And I don't know if there are any other encumbrances on the property. If there are other encumbrances on the property, we then we need to complete the foreclosure to make sure that we get clean title. If there are no other encumbrances when we do the title search, it's maybe an approach that we can take to shorten up the time frame right. to take ownership and of the property. And it will be a lot more cost effective, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Uh, so that would be my preferred route. If we can, you know, obviously we need to give uh, approval to for the city attorney to move forward with the foreclosure process. If it's possible to do it, if Mr. Emerson will agree, hey, I don't have the money to pay it, and there's no other liens that would take uh, priority to the cities, then I would, I would prefer to do a deed in lieu of foreclosure. I think it would uh, be a lot cleaner on all angles. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, thank you for the public comment. Uh, there's obviously a lot of history within Tarpon Springs, and the ability to save some of the history I think is very important uh, growing up in the historic district and also growing up in Tarpon Springs. I, I love hearing the history. Also, have an item later on the agenda that we're ex that I'm really excited to talk about um, about sharing the history around Tarpon Springs with the residents and uh, visitors. So, uh, I would encourage the city to evaluate how we can save this building, but uh, I'm in support of the foreclosure moving forward and uh, what Vice Mayor recommended with the opportunity to uh, shorten that. Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you very much for the citizen comment and input. I think it'd be a fantastic idea to explore all of the historical data, um, get it all proven, and then uh, we'll be good to go to look at those options down the road. Um, for now, I'll, I'll support the foreclosure, but I think it'd be awesome if we could make that a, a culture center or at least do some sort of ode to its history. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. I just wanted to make one extra comment. I don't know who was on the board at the time that we recognized Mr. Emerson. He came to the commission, and uh, and we recognized him here uh, for uh, all his contributions. So, yeah, he is a, a great gentleman. Well, thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Oh, excuse me. I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Do I have a second? Second. You need... I just like the, okay. you know, I mean, I think I don't think the uh, city attorney will do anything other than what's specified, but I just think the deed in lieu of foreclosure would be uh, the best route, but I, I don't think we need to add it. So I'm good okay. with the second. Roll call. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Terrapin? Yes. Mayor Lahuskas? Yes. Thank you. We are now going to the ordinance and resolutions. Item number 14 is the ordinance 2019-16 repeal taxi uh, operator's permit. This is a second reading. City Attorney, please read the ordinance. Ordinance 2019-16, an ordinance of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, repealing Division 3, titled Taxi Cabs, of Article 5 of Chapter 11 of the Tarpon Springs Code of Ordinances and providing for an effective day this ordinance. That was the second final reading of Ordinance 2019-16 by title only. It was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on July 5th, 2019. Thank you. Staff report. Staff report. No staff report. No, there's no further information from the first reading. It's uh, police department. It's police department. department. Yeah. Okay. No other information from the first reading. Okay. Are there any uh, commission comments? Any public comments on this item? Roll call. Uh, I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Donovan. Yes. Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Siever. Yes. Vice Mayor Terrapin. Yes. Mayor Lewis. Yes. yes. 
Item number 15 is a resolution 2019-19 application 18 159 condition of use storage stress properties 1730 South Pinellas Avenue we're hearing from uh, 625 2019 this is quasi judicial the city attorney will read the title and you will explain the quasi judicial process this is resolution 2019-19 a resolution of the city of Tarpon Springs Florida approving application 18-159 Requesting conditional use approval to expand an existing mini warehouse use by converting 16,335 square feet of existing commercial retail space in two existing buildings to mini storage use, resulting in a total of 51,085 square feet of mini storage use located at 1730 South Pinellas Avenue in the Highway Business HB Zoning District, providing for findings, providing for conditions, and providing an effective date. I'll go ahead and read the uh, quasi-judicial procedures. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Board of Commissioners acts as a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The Board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the Board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the Board is required by law to find against the applicant. This being a quasi-judicial hearing, I need anyone that's going to speak to stand up, raise your right hand, and be sworn under oath. You swear that the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. So after having sworn in the witnesses, staff will make its presentation followed by the applicant. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Can Heather I interrupt Earl. real quick? Um, I did speak with the applicant. Um, I don't know if I was supposed to disclose that already or not. If there are any ex parte communications, now would be the time to disclose that. Okay. I met with the applicant and discussed some items about the application. I asked him if he needed more time, and he felt that he would have enough time to present tonight. So that was a meeting I had with the applicant. Any other ex parte communications? I spoke to the applicant on the phone. Okay, can you speak into the microphone? Can you tell us what the conversation consisted of? It was basically uh, to further have more com c communication with what, uh, what the applicant is, is uh, expecting or planning to do. Okay. Mr. Donovan? Yeah, I also spoke with the applicant over the phone after our first initial meeting on this, and it was just about everything within the agenda item and what they were willing to do. Okay. So with that being said, is there any objections to the applicant for the commission to consider, uh, to continue considering this matter? Okay. Okay, you proceed then. Mayor, commissioners, Heather Earler, staff to this application. So um, I'm going to make a presentation. It'll be a abbreviated presentation because I know most of you heard this, but I know there's at least one commission, commissioner who was not here, the vice mayor, when we went through this the last time. So why we are here tonight is this is a rehearing request uh, simply because at the June 25th hearing there was a tie vote on this particular item um, uh, rec where staff is recommending um, denial of this particular application due to compatibility issues. So I'll go briefly through that criteria. But that is the reason why we're here tonight is we're rehearing that. And so we'll go through the, the application itself. It starts on the second page of your packet. Um, essentially, this is a request uh, for a conditional use permit to expand an existing mini storage warehouse um, along uh, South Pinellas Avenue. Uh, essentially, the, the property is occupied by an existing money warehouse, but there's a front building in the front that had been an existing strip commercial center. It is uh, essentially a vacant 
vacant uh, at this point and the applicant is requesting that that portion of this um, property be converted into the mini warehouse. And so that's what the, the crux of this particular application um, was for. Based on the review criteria, um, the proposed use for the subject property was reviewed uh, for the Highway Business District and it requires this conditional use. Uh, it was reviewed by the technical review team um, on April 14th and found the project met the technical uh, requirements and the site requirements of your land development code. Um, again, the proposal was to expand the mini warehouse uh, for use for the buildings fronting along Alt-19. Alt uh, the applicant has argued that the use is appropriate for the highway corridor, and really the staff doesn't agree with that. The intention of this particular corridor, and the staff has participated along with Pinellas County and several of the communities along Alt-19 corridor, is to create a corridor that is a retail, primary retail corridor where you have a lot of small business development. This is a prime location given the existing um, building configuration for that type of use. Um, this corridor, we've, we spent a lot of time trying to work through of those issues. So staff doesn't feel at this time that it's compatible to continue to expand um, the mini warehouse use. The, the, the board has already provided mini warehouse throughout the community on the, Alt 19, on the 19 corridor. And we don't feel that this is the appropriate location for additional, um, for additional storage at this time. So uh, given that staff um, took this application to the uh, planning board. The planning board found that um, the application, or I went against staff, staff's recommendation on June 17th and recommended um, denial of the application and resolution uh, with one dissenting member. Um, so they actually they actually approved the application. They voted against what, what we were recommending. So at this point in time, staff is recommending denial. However, your planning board did not. So they, they saw that this was um, an approvable application on its merits. Now, since this application was um, presented here prior, uh, previously, there has been additional information that the applicant has provided, so I'll let them kind of speak to that information. That does not change staff's, um, staff's real issue with the application is really a compatibility based on the use. It's, it's not the design of the building, the appearance of the building, the design of the site that, we're, that we have a concern with. It's really the expansion of the use into a corridor where we would like to see future development on, of a retail nature. So I can answer any questions that you have, but that's really the crux of the application. Staff continues to recommend denial on the application. Thank you. Did you want to go through the um, criteria that the commission is supposed to consider, or did you just want to submit your staff report? I would uh, just tender our staff report as the backup for that. Okay, Mr. Mayor, we need to accept that staff report into evidence. Is there any objection? Okay. okay. Um, and so now, uh, if there are no questions, of, is there any questions of staff? If being none, then the applicant make it, can make his presentation. And sir, if you could introduce yourself and your address and your relationship to the property. My name is Rick McKeever. I reside at 650 Island Way, Clearwater, Florida. Um, I am the uh, project manager for public storage. And um, uh, today we would like to uh, rehear this. And I will give abbreviated uh, version as well because I know we've all heard this before. Uh, my presentation today is going to change somewhat because, um, and I want to thank uh, the commissioners and and the mayor for hearing me and, and, and talking to me on the phone. I, I took a lot of what we was said at the last meeting to heart and, and how this property looks today and what the vision is for the future, especially on this corridor that's so important to Tarpon Springs as an entry point into the city. So um, I want, uh, we don't, public storage doesn't want to just be a business owner in the community. We want to be part of the community and we would like uh, to change the use of this property because the business that we are in is the mini storage business. The commercial side of the business has not been very uh, fruitful for us and it's hard to fill this property up. Uh, I kind of made that comment last time I was here when we had shown some of the other properties in the area that also are having trouble, you know, filling up. I think uh, the comment was that we had, you know, over 200,000 square feet presently that is not uh, rented and, uh, and is being advertised. So based on that and, and the, the, the last presentation, 
I, I listened to you guys. I heard what you said about, you know, what the vision is for the corridor. So uh, we're going to enhance the storefronts to give an appearance of a, uh, uh, that will be, you know, pleasing to Tarpon Springs. We're looking at a coastal feel that gives the kind of the feel of cabanas in the front of the property. We're uh, going to enhance the, uh, the landscaping to exceed um, even the, the, code and, uh, the required code. Uh, we're going to install an ADA compliant sidewalk brand new into the front of the property that brings the sidewalk a little closer to the road front as is uh, common in the area. We're going to uh, uh, provide um, uh, restriping of the parking lot. Um, I have two renditions I'd like to show you for as far as the parking is concerned uh, uh, because there was a, a, some other comments that were made about the starkness of the property. One would require a variance. The other would require just uh, us losing, I think, nine parking spaces because in the present use, we, are, we need to maintain like 42 parking spaces, 42 parking spaces. Um, we w are going to put in a new dumpster enclosure in the property. Um, also, I know that uh, uh, pole signs are kind of not, you know, something that, that the commission wants to see in the area. So we have a pole sign that's on the, the, the county side of the property that we're willing to remove and get rid of completely. Um, we're going to add a covered bus stop at the Jolly Trolley bus stop. That's kind of a period piece. It kind of shows a little historic value to that. And uh, we will uh, grant an easement for a public, for a uh, sign for Tarpon Springs to advertise a welcome to Tarpon Springs sign. Um, I have a, a, an easel. I want to show you some pictures that I've got, or I'll show you the, I want to show you the, the present condition and then we'll go from there. Um, so this is the, the floor plan of what we're attempting to do. We're taking the mini storage or the, the commercial storefront and making it mini storage. All the access <coughs> will be through the center of the two buildings. There will be no activity in the front of the property as far as traffic or anybody moving in stored goods. Um, and it'll all be at the rear of the property out of the side of the, of the front of the facility. Um, the compatibility, which I spoke about, um, there are many properties up and down the, the, the corridor from Klosterman all the way into Tarpon Springs that are, have vacancies and it adds up pretty quickly. Um, and here's a few of the, the, the comparables that I looked at as far as space that's available. This being the biggest one in the, in the marketplace. I know that there's probably plans for redevelopment of this space down the road, but right now they've got 82,000 square feet of unoccupied space. And so with that, I want to kind of talk about the vision of this, the, the, the front of our property. Again, I listened to you guys. I, I, I took a lot of notes from the last meeting that we had. Um, and what's not on the overhead now is some of the, in the packet that you guys had, I've got a rendition of the storefronts, okay? And then I've got, here I believe this is my board showing the, uh, the artist rendition of what we intend to, the, the property to look like. So if you, if you can see this and then look at it on your, on your handouts, uh, we didn't have time for the artwork to get done completely. They just actually completed this this morning. So we're talking about now, instead of having blanked out store or, uh, commercial storefronts with um, you know, a storefront glass, we're going to take and re reform the front of this property to make it look like individual cabanas so that it has that coastal feel. It, it looks like part of the community. Plus, we're going to double the landscaping in front of the property to really make this pop. Our neighboring property uh, across the street is a, is a nursing home and they do a fantastic job on their property f as far as the landscaping is concerned. These two properties in conjunction coming into Tarpon Springs will make a very big impact in my opinion to the corridor. Uh, and I think that would be uh, the best use for us. I know that's the best use for us, but I'm, I've, I've also added uh, the sign. I don't know if you can see it on, on your hand. I So if you want to take that yeah. back in front of the microphone, sure. and then you can explain it there so we can get you on tape. Sure. Public needs to hear. Okay. So if you guys can see the rendition, we've got the Jolly Trolley over here with the uh, bus stop and the Tarpon, welcome to Tarpon Spring sign we're going to propose. And the front of the property is going to get a lot more foliage. It's going to get a full hedgerow. And depending on what we decide tonight, 
we have two plans, and uh, if you can show them the, 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 put the landscape plan up there, and then turn it around and show the audience, please. Yeah. So that is the one that shows the, the, the small piece that we can take without a variance, okay? So that I believe it's right in this area. We're going to have to take the, uh, the slide. I'll show you the, show that to, to the audience, please. So this is the small area that we can take without a variance right here in this little corner. There's like nine spaces, I believe, guys, nine spaces, and then all this new foliage in the front and, uh, you know, the, uh, the bus stop and the sign. Our sign will be a small little monument sign. That's the only signage that we'll get. But in the front, there's just a little, what is that, a little section of, of the orange paper for the picture of uh, the sign in the front as it enters the property, enters where the gate will be, where all the tenants will come through. Second plan is to remove all of this parking here, all this parking here, add more foliage up against the building with the coastal theme, and uh, this would require us to get a variance. So that's our vision. We are, again, I heard what you guys said, I, and in conversations with, with all the commissioners, it was quite clear that the, the front of the property and in the corridor, and I couldn't agree with you more, needed to pop, needs to have a lot of character to it. I hope that we've, we've done that, and we really are excited to do the project and be a uh, a contributor to that corridor and making that corridor beautiful. If you have any questions. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. McKeever, you mentioned uh, in your presentation tonight that by uh, doing what you're proposing to do that there won't be any activity, there will no longer be activity in the front of the building and it will all be off the street where you can't see it. Correct. My My thinking is that that's not what we want. We want there to be more activity on the street. We want the corridor to appear more vibrant with more trips, more activity at the site. I think that's why part of the reason why staff doesn't find it compatible uh, with, this, with the corridor in itself. Um, have you given any thought to what the difference in your marketability or your rental rates would be if you continued with the new landscaping, the new striping, the new signage, et cetera? Y yes, we have. And, and uh, about four years ago, we did a pretty extensive re-landscaping of the front of the property um, and really saw no uptick in, in our rentability. The rents were very low for the marketplace in that area. Um, so uh, it was tried once. We just uh, feel that, you know, we, wanna, we wanted to get into our core business, and our core business is mini storage. Any other questions of the applicant? If I can make one more comment on that, in, a, in the mini storage side of the business, which is basically only people that live in Tarpon Springs use us, we maintain 95% occupancy. Uh, so it's used by this community a lot. Commissioner Carr, did you have a question? Yeah, I just want to see the landscape plan for sure. the option two. Sir, did you want to submit these do these poster boards into evidence for the commission, or did you want to retain those? I uh, I will submit them in evidence. That'd be fine. Okay. And this uh, eight eight and a half by eleven. This is the same as the big one. That's correct. Okay. Well, maybe you could save that one, and we'll just use the smaller That's one. That's fine. Okay. You can have either one you want. Um, so, Mr. Mayor, we need to receive those into evidence as well. Um, okay. So don't leave with those tonight. Okay. Do you have any other witnesses that you wanted to call, sir? No, I do not. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can you take these down now? And um, the public is going to be speaking, and so I just want to make sure that they have clear sight of all of our commissioners. So Commissioner okay. Donovan is not behind a sign. Um, so now is the time for uh, any member of the public that is opposing the application to step forward and speak. Is there anyone wishing to step forward and speak? Sir, were you sworn in earlier? Okay, well, let me go ahead and swear you in then. That's fine. Raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, sir, can you step to the podium? Tell us your name and address, please, and then tell us whatever you want to tell us. Uh, my name is Torrance Hunt. I live at 1955 
North Highland Avenue in Tarpon Springs. And I don't know these guys, <laughs> never met them whatsoever, but I have developed and owned many storages for the last 30 years of my life. And what's happened, guys, we used to anchor our mini storages with strip stores. And that product has gone away. And we have deteriorated with the caliber of tenant that we can get. And I own multiples up and down US 19. And we've had to convert three of our mini storages retail property to storage units. And what they're asking for is very consistent with the industry. Um, you cannot get people to pay for the retail units because of Amazon and Google and all that stuff that we all use almost every single day of our life the mom and pop operations have just gone. And for what little I've seen here, to landscape this thing up, make it attractive to Tarpon Springs for a mini storage unit, because guys, you're dreaming if you think you're gonna create more retail in a strip store. It just does not happen. We just converted one two years ago and to many storage units in Pinellas County. And get it looking pretty. Make it effective for the entry to come in here. And you're going to do a lot better. If you force these people to make it retail, the customer is not there. So I'm sorry. I wish it was. We would, he didn't want to change it. He's changing because he can't find the tenant to go in there. It's tough. I've been in it for 30 years. It's extremely, extremely tough. And he's not on Deaconese. He's not on Tarpon Avenue or whatever to where he can maybe get some retail stuff. But it's, a, it's incredibly tough. And I'm standing up here on a knee jerk. I mean, I feel for him. I mean, uh, matter of fact, you're a competitor. <laughs> it's... I think you might be making a wrong decision if you force him to stay retail. Uh, I'm in it. I know it. I appreciate you listening to me. You all know who I am. Okay. Well, I was asking for opposition. Obviously, that was not an opposition. <laughs> so uh, thank you, sir. Anyone else that want to speak in opposition to the application? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and swear you in again, Ms. Mrs. Prose. Right I do. How about your right hand? I do. <laughs> Swear the testimony we're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Uh, there were some businesses in there, and they had to move. My question is this, which shouldn't have any bearing on this, the tax base of the storage units versus the commercial use. And if the commercial use isn't there, and a lot of the stores stay empty, we do not get permits, and there's no taxes coming out of it. So what is the difference in the taxes and what we get in the city versus the commercial, which may be filled up, may not. We see a lot of empty buildings versus the storage. I don't know these people, but that came to my mind. And I think Mr. Terrapani may have an answer. I don't know. But what is the greatest use with uh, a tax base in that area? And that's what it boils down to, money. Boils down to money. Thank you. Anyone else that wants to speak in opposition? Yes, ma'am, if you could step forward. I don't believe I swore you in either, did I? Okay, I didn't see you back there. I'm sorry. If you could state your name and your address, please. Hi, my name is Wendy Ent, and I reside at uh, 602 Sparrow Avenue in Palm Harbor. However, I am a tenant at the address that we're talking about. Less than a month ago, I was told by the facilities manager, the corporate facilities manager in Atlanta, that business was as usual. We would not have to move out as many of the other tenants did on the other side of the building. I'm in suite G. 
I have four rooms in Sweet G. I have for about eight years, maybe a little bit more. The improvements of the landscaping, I thought, was the plant that I put in front of my door. I did not see anything. They could improve the way that looks. You have to excuse me. I know I sound, you probably hear my heart. I was not prepared to speak. Um, I am a licensed mental health counselor, and I have a business in there and a wannabe business in there, a, a bookstore, self-help. I'm not doing anything right now. In fact, I have taken positions over in Europe so I can get enough money, one, to live and make house repairs, and two, to develop my, my office. Currently, with the position, uh, permission of public storage, I have someone else who is sharing the rent right now um, and having her business in there several nights a week. We don't have a lot of signage because we are pretty low profile based on the clients that we meet. There are things that they certainly can do at public storage to improve its curb appeal, like orange paint, that orange is the color of public storage. They can just paint it. They could use marigolds. They can put cannas in the big ditch in the front. Yes, they can still improve that sidewalk. The reason I selected that space for my office was because, well, I majored in community psychology. And I definitely believe that corridors are important and also what you have in the corridors that bring, can bring community closer together. Maybe I'm wrong. I wanted to offer low cost services, but actually most of it is pro bono. Uh, the person who shares my rent, she does charge. So as I said earlier, less than a month ago, when I was in England, working with military members um, so that we can come back to our communities and um, get the American pride sense. I'm working with the military members so they can come back to their communities. I'm providing pretty much pro bono services. And less than a month after being told that everything's good to go, I'm told by a sign in the front of public storage that there's a hearing tonight. I have nothing prepared to say. But I do believe that the vision, and I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know your name. I do recognize you, though. I think I see you every month, uh, <laughs> once a year. <laughs> um, what they have as their vision as a corridor into Tarpon Springs, linking some of the nearby towns um, is excellent. And I think we can only grow community and have us grow as a community, not just to attend events and not just to attend small businesses, but to help us grow together. On the other hand, I believe that turning it into a complete public storage unit is nothing but money in the pockets of a corporation. Thank you. And excuse me if I didn't use proper code protocol. You're fine, thank you. Anyone else that wants to speak in opposition? Mr. Delacus? Were you sworn in, sir? Okay. Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue, given only four minutes. I'll point your attention to the conditional use application where it says storage trust properties, 701 Western Avenue, Glendale, California. As the lady mentioned, another corporation from out of the area wishing to do things that are not appropriate as your staff has pointed out to you. Uh, since Heather didn't go into detail to the criteria, I do want to highlight a few things on page three under number two, the use of which the property be, be put is appropriate to the property in question compatible with the existing plan uses. In the, second, in the first paragraph, the last page, incompatibility with area land uses in South Pinellas County Quarter and incompatibility with the aesthetics and physical character of the area. Uh, also on page four, 
Last paragraph in there, it says the applicant has proposed to bring the landscaping up to the current standards. While this is a step in the right direction, it's not considered sufficient to overcome the deficiencies of the proposed look of the property. And that's just talking about the look. Uh, I also saw in here uh, an analysis the property would permit the expansion of a use that is not compatible with the existing character of the neighborhood. Uh, with the change of this use from retail to many warehouses, the individual rented stores will be removed. The applicant process proposes to alter the look of the building and uh, promoting the sense of place currently it does not, is not consistent with promoting the sense of place. I would like to ask staff at some point to put into the record how many apartment units are going in at Mears Crossing. We have apartments just east at Savannah Cove. I'm going to tell you a short story. I was coming back from Palm Harbor one day, coming down Curlew Place. It was 2, 3 in the afternoon, one of those 90 degree days. And I saw a gentleman standing out front of the driveway or the access to Savannah Cove, an elderly man, wearing a gator's hat, and surprisingly had his thumb out. I says, well, that's cool. Let me stop and pick him up, see what he needs. Some of you may know Tony Samarcus. And I say, hey, man, what, what you need? He says, oh, I need to get it right uptown. I have to go to the bank, and I have to get a few things up at Walgreens. Took him up there, took him to the bank, waited for him a little bit. I, and he kind of implied he had a ride, but it turned out he didn't, so I ended up driving him back to Savannah Cove. That probably about a mile and a half round trip walk. If you had retail at this location, two, three blocks. And I would say that all these amenities and cutesies, the fixing up the landscaping and changing the pole sign and fixing all that stuff, that can be done now and you would enhance your property's value such that you would get some of that retail that wouldn't want to go into the old Dixie, which I'd hope eventually somebody will come in with a large project development. It also mentions in here the FDOT survey that has been looking at how we use Alternate 19 and how to fix it. You're gonna want people to drive by in the jolly trolley and just see all these blackened windows and a big orange. I mean, I'm not gonna comment on the aesthetics there. That's everybody's subject to that. But uh, you have to look at what Anita and a number of people have come up before on other places of town. This area is just as important. And part of the problem is part of it's county and we can't control what's further south of us because of that. But you do have control of this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wants to speak in opposition to the application? Anyone want to speak in favor of the application tonight? Okay, now is the time for applicant to make a summary. Um, sir, do you have anything else you want to add to summarize your application? If so, you need to step up there to the microphone. No, I just wanted, uh, in closing, just to say that I respect everybody's opinion here. Um, I know that the, the that there's uh, is businesses up and down the corridor that you know are servicing the area. I just think that the better use for us is to um, uh, let us with, go ahead with our plan and really beautify the entry point to Tarpon Springs. Thank you, Heather. Do you have any closing statements that you wanted to make based upon the testimony that you've heard? Not at this time, but I can answer any questions if you have any. If there are no other questions uh, of the commission, now would be the time to close the public hearing and take the uh, matter under consideration. I have a question for the applicant, if I could ask. Hmm? Sorry? I had some questions for the applicant. Um, yeah, that, okay. Sir, could you step up to the microphone? This was brought up last the last meeting you all presented before the board um, in asking would you what was your willingness to um, to fix up the front of the building, add additional landscaping, and keep the retail. And my understanding at the last meeting is there wasn't really much of a willingness to do any more than the last site plan that was approved. Is that still the case today? Well, no. I, obviously, we need to do some improvements if we don't get the, the passage of this, uh, this, this amendment. So uh, we need to do some landscaping. I don't know we'd go to the extent that we are, we're trying to do now because we really want to make it a showpiece for 
the entire community, but uh, yeah, we, we couldn't leave it the way it is, that's for sure. Okay. And I believe last time you mentioned public storage is open to additional conditional uses, if be so. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you, sir. Thank you. Close the public hearing. Mayor, it's for the thank board's you. consideration. Thank you. Back to the commission. And now we're going to go to the uh, commission comments. I will start by saying that uh, I appreciate the, uh, the applicant that uh, changed the design and is willing to make some uh, changes, but still, it's a mini storage. Uh, I look at the building as I'm driving by, I notice that it's been neglected and it's a lot of work to be done. Probably why many of the people are moving out, I don't know. But uh, as I stated during the last meeting that uh, uh, mini storage is very desirable on US-19, not, we do not encourage storages, mini uh, storages on the alternate 19. We rather have uh, small businesses Small businesses is the backbone of our of our uh, economy, and that's what I would like to see. Um, I, mini storages is not what we want on the urban core, and I cannot support that application. Vice Mayor, uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I would just say I'm appreciative of the applicant to come back and try and you know rectify it and make a, a better, more appealing uh, site plan that we could uh, support. But I don't think that the what's being proposed is compatible. Um, you know, I'm not generally one to uh, make subjective opinions about, you know, what you could do better or anything like that. Although, you know, I will tell you that the small retail center a couple blocks down that has many storage behind it seems to be doing fine and it's full. Um, watch your project and the tenants that come and go. But I think that there's uh, substantial amounts of retail and office value there. I uh, wish you the best of luck, but I don't think bringing many storage to the street is compatible. Thank you. Commissioner Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Um, there'd be a couple of things at this point where I would be able to support this from a compatibility standpoint. Um, the last meeting we had some discussions, and uh, but I just want to go ahead and read off some of these items. And it shows that the applicant has really made a, an effort, I think, to be more compatible to the area um, from an aesthetic standpoint um, and some other aspects and willingness to really show um, and make an effort to be a part of the community, although they're a large corporation. Uh, I'm not a big fan of large corporations coming in the Tarpon Springs, as I've mentioned before in the past, but um, the one thing I do want to preface is it, it looks like the applicant is really making an effort to um, fit into the community um, with the different designs and the facades, et cetera. So uh, I have 11 um, items that I feel that would make this project more compatible to the area. Um, the walkability of the corridor that's been discussed tonight uh, the rideability of the Jolly Trolley and the public um, transportation, and also from the entrance of the gateway part of our city coming from the south down of Palm Harbor. Uh, and I do want to um, thank Mr. Hunt for his comment as well um, of his expertise in owning many storages for many years as, as well in this category. So the first uh, item I would suggest and make a conditional use um, would be a wider sidewalks in front of the building with a minimum of six feet. The second item would be as these are presented from the applicant is to um, redesign the front of the building to have a coastal look alternating between the um, different buildings that are currently offices today uh, between brick, hardy board, and cedar um, plank hardy board. Um, alternating between the different um, units that show that there's actually different buildings. So it, it doesn't look like one just large office building. Um, B would be to re reduce the amount of windows as proposed and add shutters. C would be um, that the false doors in the front would not be accessible from the front of the building, only accessible from the back of the building. Uh, D to point two would be no tinted windows and I would suggest to use historic pictures from the city of Tarpon Springs Historic Society um, large enough that could be seen from the sidewalk and have some sort of light shining on these pictures at night so they can be seen either when driving by or walking on the sidewalk. Number three would be to use a metal roof which would be a coastal metal roof similar to the building that they have 
on the corner next to Pinellas Rental on the um, county property. Number four would be to reduce the parking spots as proposed and um, their second option and add additional green space. Number five would be remove both pole signs, add the following, one monument sign with a brick clay base and with a small roof to match the building as suggested in number three. B, only one sign on the front of the building. That would be um, where the public storage office would be held. Uh, C, allow two small additional brick signs at the entrance of the property. D would be the stop sign would match the pole signs that are within Tarpon Springs. The powder coated stop signs is what I'm referring to, similar to the historic district. Number six would be to limit the color of orange to be used only where the office is, no wider than 20 feet of the storefront that faces alternate 19. Um, I forgot one item with the facade. The facade would need to be, um, would need to match any visible um, part of the property that you could see from the road. So that would also uh, include the areas just behind the gate, the automatic gate that would, um, where the cars drive behind as well. Additional landscape, as the applicant has referred to, I uh, would encourage cluster palms, foxtail palms, hurricane sable palms. Those are palms that have fallen down and have grown back up with a little bit of curve. Um, to them or Washingtonian palms. Um, additional landscape, the use of muley grass and kunti palms is something that's Florida friendly, so when it dries out, they're not going to die. Uh, I would not encourage the use of ligustrum uh, shrubs, viburnum shrubs, or pittosporums, and I would not encourage the use of crepe myrtles in this property to keep with the coastal theme. Again, I would encourage additional landscaping on the south side of the parking lot in the area where up against the building where the parking lot's being proposed to be removed. Number eight would be a bus shelter, uh, similar to the design of the sign brick with a coastal historic um, look. Number nine would be to install some type of artwork to incorporate Tarpon Springs in its coastal feel. If it's a small set of pelicans or a small, two small statues in the south side of the parking lot. Number 10 would be to come up with a maintenance plan and propose it to the city to maintain the property. Number 11 is grant easement to the city of Tarpon Springs, which was proposed by the applicant. And that is all the different items I would be willing to approve under the conditional use for a mini storage unit. How many um, did you really so 11 with Additional ABCs. Commission Sieber. Yes. Um, I haven't changed my mind from uh, the last meeting where I, I uh, agreed with this applicant. I usually agree with the city and, and uh, understand their, uh, their concerns. Planning and zoning did approve this application. Um, the bottom line is that retail is not growing. Uh, I agree 100% with Mr. Hunt. We have so many empty stores on alternate 19 that that is an eyesore to me, and that is not an, an enhancement to our corridor or alternate 19. So I would prefer to see a business that already exists. Uh, this is not a new uh, corporation coming in. This, this corporation already exists. I would rather see uh, a corporation who's willing to work with our community and enhance that corridor uh, and, and is willing to, to, to comply to a lot of the things that we're asking. Um, to, to make this corridor more attractive. Um, as far as tax base, we're getting no tax taxes from all these empty stores uh, in Tarpon Springs, and we do have many vacancies. Uh, if you count them up and down all 19, as you mentioned, how many thousands of square feet that are vacant. Um, and, and that is, to me, very uh, unattractive uh, coming into Tarpon Springs. So I agree with this applicant wanting to expand um, this, their storage unit. Uh, I think they're trying to work hard <coughs> to to make us happy, and um, and I think it will be a much better look and an enhancement to the entryway of Tarpon Springs and, and, and Alternate 19 than the the vacant storages, uh, the vacant stores that we have now. So I uh, I propose to go uh, with the applicant. Thank you. 
for Mr. Donovan. Yeah, thank you all for your comments, uh, both in support and in opposition. Uh, I also did not change my mind since the last meeting. Uh, I'm not ready to give up on retail just yet, but uh, for me, it's just a business in Tarpon Springs that wants to expand their business into empty storefront. I mean, you take a drive down Alternate 19, uh, especially all throughout that corridor, and the empty storefront really, really, really starts to add up. Um, the business is also obviously willing to work with the city. They put a lot of effort into this presentation, and I appreciate that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I feel as though by forcing them to keep the retail, we're stunting a business's growth. And, um, you know, I just think we should let the consumers and the people of Tarpon Springs decide what is and isn't economically viable. So, um, again, I, I don't support forcing them into making this retail. I think they got a vision. Um, I support their vision. And uh, if, if there's any questions I can answer um, for, for the board, I'd, I'd happily do it. Any other comments? Here, we'll retain the motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve this application. Is that with my conditional uses? We're, most of those conditional uses were already uh, addressed with their presentation. Is that not correct? Yeah, but a presentation is different from a conditional use application and what the city is requiring at that point, and maybe the city attorney can um, elaborate, but I think it's important, and for my support, it would I would have to see the conditional uses included. So the answer to the question is, is if the motion is made without the conditions that Commissioner Carr is, you're going to vote on that up or down, um, but um, he has suggested it to be included in the um, in the motion. So you need to make that decision whether or not you want to include it. If not, then we'll wait for a second on the motion that you've made and vote it up or down. So um, those were a lot of conditional uses, so I, I didn't write them all down. But I'm making a motion to approve it at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Second. 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 Roll call. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Carr? No. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Chair Penny? No. Mayor Alhusis? No. Okay, so the motion fails. I would like to make a different motion um, if I. Okay. I just want to see if we could get anything with uh, Commissioner Carr's uh, recommendations in. It's already been acted upon. The application's been acted upon. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're now going to the item number 16, which is the application 19-32, request for extension of time for negotiations of North Lake Estates. City Attorney, do we have, uh, can you please explain the code of this item, see if the uh, Board of Commissions have the authority to extension of the uh, negotiation? I do. I wasn't prepared to read. To deal with this, no, this, this is my. Uh, this is um, Mr. The courses, Mayor. By the development agreement procedures, um, you authorized on April 16th in our negotiations. Um, by the rules that are established in that, um, I'm to give a report in three months. Yeah, and if I don't have an agreement, then I have to ask for an extension for it to continue. So because of a lot of different things with this, um, not able to be done within the three months. So um, by the rules, asking you for it to extend and have himself and staff continue negotiating to see if we can come into any agreement on development agreement on this property okay. by your code. So this is simply an ex ask for an extension in time for the procedures. Mr. LeCour, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask. How close have you got to get an agreement? Um, there, there's just a lot of things with this property, so, um, you know, um, again, without going into negotiation, which is not proper to do now until I get it negotiated, I can, but um, we wouldn't be able to do it in the couple weeks' time frame we have before the three months are up. So it's definitely not going to make the three month uh, time frame. Vice Mayor Tarapan. Mayor, maybe we should ask how much, how long the extension, how how much longer he needs. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not sure. And again, in your development agreement process, it doesn't it doesn't state that. Um, three months. Probably, I'd say at least at least three months. Okay. Yeah. Are there any uh, commission questions or comments? We go to the public comments. Are there any? Uh, anyone has any comments? Uh, if anyone is wishing to speak on the agenda item or ask if you please come forward, line up, and sign in, sign the uh, signing sheet that we got next to the podium. And if you please state your name and your address for the record, you'll be given four minutes. And I'd like to ask our uh, Deputy City Clerk to read the uh, procedure of the public comment. Okay. This is an excerpt from the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs 2-138, titled Public Comments, Preservation of Order and Decorum. A, the city, the city Manager also shall note on the agenda and the Mayor shall inform members of the public okay. that no speaker shall have the right to address the Board of Commissioners for more than four minutes on any particular item. Members of the public present at the meeting may donate their time to a speaker to extend the speaker's time, but such donation shall forfeit the donator's right to speak. The speaker shall identify the persons who have donated their speaking time. Each donation shall extend the speaker's time an additional two minutes. In no event shall the speaker's time be extended beyond 10 minutes of total speaking time. Any de deviation from this rule must be approved by consensus of majority of the board, but no vote needed to be taken to waive this requirement. B, each person addressing the city commission shall approach the podium <coughs> shall give his or her name and address in an audible tone of voice. All remarks shall be addressed to the city commission as a body and not to any member thereof. All speakers, including city commission, shall be recognized by the mayor. No person other than members of the city commission and the person having the floor shall be permitted to enter into any discussion, either directly or through members of the city commission. No questions shall be asked to individual commission members, except through the mayor. Any person making personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks who shall become boisterous while addressing the City Commission may be requested to leave the meeting and may forthwith be barred from further, from further audience at the meeting. C. The Mayor shall preserve order and decorum and shall prevent attacks on personalities or the impunging of motives of particular members and shall prevent digression from the questions under discussion. The mayor shall ensure, shall ensure no boisterous conduct, such as cheering, clapping, or the like, and shall be permitted during debate. The chief of police or his or her designate shall be the sergeant of arms of the city commission. That's it. We're ready to go. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kate Wells. I'm an attorney with Trenum Law at 200 Central Avenue in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I am present this evening on behalf of David Nelson. He's the owner of the property located at 1132 East Lake Drive. I submit for your consideration that focusing on the development agreement is putting the cart before the horse and sending a message to the community that the applications filed by Pioneer for annexation, for amendment to the comprehensive plan, and for the rezoning are a done deal. When I look at um, Article 6 of your Land Development Code, which deals with development agreements, Section 97 um, includes some procedures, including requiring the property owner uh, who's desiring to enter into a development agreement to make application through the planning department and pay the required fee, which I understand was done. Upon receipt of an application for development agreement, the city manager shall request authorization from the Board of Commissioners to negotiate with the applicant. I believe that was done a few months ago. And then upon authorization from the Board of Commissioners to negotiate, the applicant shall submit a development proposal consisting of certain minimum criteria. And it sounds like that is the process that's going on at the moment. Once that development proposal is submitted, um, a review is required to be scheduled within 30 days and conducted by the Technical Review Committee to determine compliance with the city ordinances, regulations, and that the development is consistent with the local comprehensive plan. And once compliance with the city ordinances and regulations have been determined by the TRC, then the development proposal is transmitted to the city manager for negotiation. I submit to you that review by the TRC of compliance with your ordinances and regulations and comprehensive plan 
that is a review that should occur before this board during the annexation, land use amendment, and rezoning applications, and should not be done by the TRC in lieu of. I would ask, how can that finding of consistency with the comprehensive plan occur in advance of any hearings before this board or commission on the underlying applications? So I would suggest that instead of using staff resources to develop the development agreement at this point, let Pioneer process the applications that were filed, I believe, last year for annexation, comprehensive plan amendment, and rezoning. If after hearings that finding of consistency is made, then it would be appropriate for Pioneer to develop that develop or negotiate that development agreement at the time the rezoning is being processed. One other item um, that I want to raise, and I mean no disrespect in raising it, but I feel obligated to at this point, and that is with respect to the voting conflicts under Section 112.3143 of the Florida Statutes. Members of this board are subject to this section of the Florida Statutes, which prohibits a public officer from voting on any matter which may inure to his or her special private gain or loss. This includes matters which would inure to the special private gain or loss of a relative. When my client first learned of this matter and I was retained, I reached out to Cindy Terrapani to assist with an analysis of the land use and zoning issues associated with the applications. At that time, she advised me that this would present a conflict of interest. In addition, I hear um, Members of the community talk about the strong business relationship between John Terrapani and Pioneer. And to the extent that there is a voting conflict of interest, as that is defined by statute, I would respectfully request that Vice Mayor Terrapani and anybody else that this would apply to, that they uh, withdraw and not vote on any matters related to these applications. And I am available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kelly Snow. Sorry, my phone closed. Um, I'm representing CNCN. It's the Council for North County Neighborhoods. And I've been asked to read um, a statement from CNC and we believe that the proposed project is not in conformity with the county's East Lake overlay plan. And um, I live at 416 Klosterman Road West. Did I do answer all the questions I needed to? And I'm right, I'm just gonna write that down real quick. Thank you. All right, my name is Mark Washburn. I live at 124 East Lake Drive in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Uh, first, I want to kindly ask Vice Mayor Tanzan Tarapani to recuse himself from this and any future vote regarding Pioneer Homes because of his and his wife's financial entanglements and working relationship with them. I want to introduce the city of Tarpon Springs to our organization called Save East Lake. We are a neighborhood coalition comprised now of over 100 neighbors in the North East Lake area located within a mile or less of this proposed development. We are in the process of setting up a 501c4 nonprofit organization in order to fund our legal expenses as well as to fund the study required to form our own municipality. More on that in a minute. Um, first thing I want to do regarding that is apologize to everybody ahead of time. We're going to be putting in several hundred of these yard signs all over Pinellas County. So I want to apologize because chances are you're going to get some emails some phone calls. Um, we're going to use these basically to drive traffic to fundraise our cause. Uh, other municipalities such as Tierra Verde, Palm Harbor have ha had issues with annexations. So um, you'll see these signs, not in the city, they'll be outside of the city. Um, so I want to apologize for that. Uh, the city commissioners, the mayor, and other staff, as it is likely, uh, that with several hundred of these signs going up around Pinellas County, you may be getting some phone calls and emails regarding this issue. Before these signs go up, we're going to revamp our website to allow for um, more people to join our coalition, as well as per, uh, give us donations. Besides funding our legal team, part of these donations will also go to funding the study required for us to form our own municipality. 
As you might be aware, our neighbors to the east and the Keystone region of Hillsborough County have also been threatened by developers chomping at the bit to increase density. Just like Pioneer Homes is threatening to destroy our rural lifestyle with dense suburban development where it does not belong. So they have formed the Keystone Civic Association and I've been working with the Florida League of Cities to file for an incorporation. The Hillsborough County Board of Commissioners have already voted unanimously to move forward and to fund the study required to do so for the uh, Keystone area of Hillsborough County. So chances are they may be moving towards becoming their own municipality. Um, we have been in communication with Joshua Butts, the president of the Keystone Civic Association and the Florida League of Cities, and we are planning to basically do the same thing that they're doing and moving forward with, with exploring that as a possibility to stop these annexations. Um, lastly, uh, we're also in talks with the Army Corps and they are well aware of the proposed development. They assure us that no heavy equipment can touch that property until they issue a permit. Approximately 10 acres or 23% of the property are wetlands. The southern portion is governed by the Lake Tarpon Watershed District. The northern portion is part of the Inklet River Watershed. Our neighbors are united against this attack on our rural lifestyle and we ask the Tarpon Springs Commissioners to please side with common sense to protect our rural lifestyle and not let the greed of financial gain of a developer take precedence over our neighborhood. Thank you. Next person, please. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Terry Wetzel. I reside at 2545 Royal Liverpool Drive in Tarpon Springs, Florida. I, for my business, I am a property manager and I manage several communities within the area of which we speak. I manage Cypress Turn Center, which is a commercial development located at the intersection of East Lake Drive and Keystone Road. I also manage three homeowner associations, Cypress Run, Villas East at Cypress Run, and Villas West at Cypress Run, which are located on the east side of East Lake Drive and situated across from the proposed North Lake Estates development, which is planning to request annexation into your city. I would like to state on behalf of the property owners that I represent, we have had several meetings and get togethers uh, to determine our best method of attack here, but uh, the real issue that we have is that we are opposed to any annexation of this property as we view it simply as a method being employed by Pioneer Homes to circumvent the lower density that currently exists there in Pinellas County. As you know, the Pinellas County Board of Commissioners in 2012 adopted the East Lake Tarpon community overlay in which this property is located. This overlay <coughs> was done to be used as a guide for any proposed construction or development in this area with the goal of maintaining the community's quality of life, the low density, and the residential character of the neighborhood. With that said, <clears throat> there are significant incompatibility issues associated with the proposed development, which we will be prepared to discuss at the appropriate time, and we request that when the project is brought to you for an annexation consideration, that you deny such annexation. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Chris Roboski, 1602 Gulf Beach Boulevard, Tarpon Springs, 34689. I told you a couple of weeks ago that uh, there was growing opposition to this project. And as I mentioned before, with the amount of wetlands on that, jur jurisdictional wetlands that are on the, uh, the property, they're not going to get to build whatever it is you try to negotiate with them anyway. It's not going to happen. They're never going to be able to fill in all those wetlands, it's not going to happen. This project will come to a screeching halt. But let's say you want to just push it 
anyway. These people do not want to be governed by you. <laughs> they want to govern themselves. They have a way of life that they'd like to preserve. They don't want an increase of traffic going through those small roads. They don't want the density and intensity increased. So much so that they're willing to go through all the legal hoops to create their own municipality. I mean, that's how much they don't want this. They're going to do whatever it takes to protect their way of life, just like they're doing in Keystone and Hillsborough, in which I believe they, they even got a protective order over some property from the county. So that could happen here too. So you're not going to get whatever you're trying to negotiate with these people. It's not going to happen. So why put these people through it? Just let this thing die tonight. You don't have to give them extra time to negotiate. Just tell them forget it. Let them come back later if they want to try something else. Just let it die tonight. You don't have to vote to extend time for this thing, to negotiate something that these people do not want. And for what? You don't have to do this. You don't have to push this. It's only going to get worse from here. These people are very organized. A much larger group was at the meeting that I attended uh, and saw the people that are in opposition to this are much more organized and well-funded than the anti-Walmart group. So you thought that was something. Just wait until you come up against this group. The city doesn't need this. Just be an embarrassment. It's like you're trying to steal land uh, from these people and steal their way of life. It's not right. And you can end it now, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Next person, please. Hello, everybody. Thank you for taking our concerns. My name is uh, Rich Caputo. I live at 611 East Lake Drive, Tarpon Springs. This proposed development is directly behind my house, so I am very concerned about it. And the first thing I'd like to say, I'd like Vice Mayor Terrapani to remove himself from any of the further dealings. Obvious conflict of interest, so let's just get that out of the way. I want that to be put on record. My second thing is I'd like to agree with everything our attorney Kate has recommended. She's looking out for our best interest. These people at Pioneer aren't looking out for our best interest. They're looking out for their own best interest, which is making as much money as they can and building as big a development as they, you will allow them to. Not consistent with the neighborhood. I'm not here to argue with that today. I'm just here to say that I don't like it, and I appreciate if you'd be on our side for a change and stop this big business and stop this big development. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next person, please. Good evening. I'm Kathy Zervis Cook. I live at 1041 Royal Burkdale Drive in Cypress Run. I'm here with a, the emotional side of the conversation. Um, I grew up here in Tarpon. My parents grew up here in Tarpon. After high school, like a lot of people, I moved away for a career. And after 20 years, I proudly moved back, even though today, I live in Tarpon and commute to Tampa, but it's really important for me to live here. My husband and I chose to live in Cypress Run because of the abundance of wildlife and the quality of life there. Um, this development, as it's proposed, demolishes nine acres of beautiful wetlands. And as you know, they're getting more and more um, pristine every day. Um, so that, along with the additional traffic, would, would truly negatively impact our quality of life here and why we chose to, li to live here. And speaking of Mrs. Protus's um, follow the money tax revenue, the way it's proposed, the, the increase in the traffic will make it even more difficult for us to shop and dine in Tarpon. 
because we have another exit that would lead us to East Lake or God forbid, Pasco, right? So everyone from Publix and Walmart to Tarpon Tavern and the Sponge Docks, they're gonna lose our, our business and, our, and you're gonna lose the tax revenue because it's gonna be easier for us to go other places. So please, you know, I hope you guys keep that in mind when, when you're considering this. Please deny the voluntary annexation and help us to maintain the quality of life and why we chose to stay in Tarpon. Thank you. Uh, Dennis Schneider, 671 East Lake Drive. Transparency. I want you to just think with me. Pioneer Homes, they're businessmen, correct? Yes. Successful businessmen, right? Yes. Smart mis businessmen? Yes. Here's what I question. As a businessman, they're going to purchase this land, invest all this money, but they said, quote, unquote, this will not be profitable for us, not me, them, if it's one acre. See, we're zoned for two acres. We're in the county. We're not in the town. So how did these businessmen say, we're going to purchase all this and then go to you guys? I'm saying, is there a p potential inside information that they know somebody on this board that will approve it? If it's so, that's not fair. Also, uh, the individual who has a conflict of interest, if he does business with Pioneer or is related to Pioneer, his vote obviously should not count. Last thing to uh, bring up is, what I don't understand, you could correct me uh, later on, is uh, we're in the county and you have people are making decisions, okay, in the, in the, in the town based on the county rules, based on our land. So how do you approve something and extend something if you're not annexed, and why are you gonna annex this situation? And if you do, keep it at two acres, if that's possible. But again, I question, the businessman said to us, it's not profitable, we can't make money on one acre. As a businessman, I'm gonna be redundant once more. I will not invest in a dime if I know I can't make money tells me there's something going on that we're not aware of. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next person. Good evening. My name is Tanya Almond, and my husband Al Almond is here with me. Uh, we live at 2634 East Lake Trail in Tarpon Springs. We purchased our home here in January of this year and moved here from Maryland. We searched for a home all around a 50 mile radius for about six months uh, before we settled on this location. We love the rural character of this neighborhood and community. It was the main reason that we bought our home here. Just in the few short months that we have lived here, we have seen so much wildlife on a daily basis on and around our property. I have taken many pictures of this wildlife and I'd be happy to submit them electronically for your review. Please let me know if that's uh, a way for me to do that. I have also seen bald eagles, rosette spoonbills, wood storks, and gopher tortoises on and around the property in question. And I know they're all protected by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Also on this property, there are numerous deer, coyotes, wild turkey, raccoons, squirrels, and even a bobcat or two. There are several hawks, and just last night, I finally got a picture of what looks like a tawny owl. I urge you to protect these animals and their habitat. There have been rules and laws established around zoning for a reason. My husband and I grew up in Maryland and witnessed so much development and zoning changes over the last 45 plus years there, and it has had a real detrimental impact on the wildlife. In fact, my husband's father was a commercial fisherman and crabber in the Chesapeake Bay throughout his childhood. They grew up hunting and fishing, and he has witnessed firsthand the impacts on wildlife from overdevelopment. We would be so disheartened to watch that happen here. I think you have something very special here in Tarpon Springs, just like your new tourism video is highlighting. Please urge you to protect that. Thank you for your consideration, 
and I trust you protect the wildlife that cannot speak for themselves. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening. Uh, George Zutz, uh, 46 West Lemon Street, Tarpon Springs. Uh, we've been working diligently with not only our consultants, but also the city, and we need a little more time to try to present a quality development that I think the city of Tarpon would be proud of. And uh, we're just asking to uh, allow us more time to, for your consideration after we get all our plans together for you to review it and see if it's going to be something that's good for the town. And I think we owe it to the citizens of Tarpon Springs. We discussed tax base, everything else, to at least review this to make sure that it'll be in compliance with what the, uh, the city will feel good about. Three months. It's not in our control that we've been sitting on it. We've been, we have to schedule appointments with different agencies and all that before we can come back to you with all the facts. So it just takes more time. Any questions? Nita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. I'm furious. I have never seen going on as I have tonight with Commissioner Carr like blackmail on the developers here. It's up to the commission what they want, but you can't make a lot of recommendations and say to get my vote, this is what you're going to get. Secondly, I don't appreciate an attorney attacking good citizens of Tarpon Springs. Honest citizens who have worked all their lives to keep their family's reputation and their reputation above board. I resent the fact that you've made them sound like they're doing something wrong. This commissioner, Terrapani on the board, is a very educated, honest young man, and he's proven himself. And you've come in, and you're blackening names of families in this community. That's wrong. If you don't want the development, then let them buy the property and pay the price. But don't come to a commission meeting unless you've got facts and you know that they're not honest and they're not good citizens. This is so wrong. I don't know anything about your project. I don't want to know. But I know these developers have been above board throughout the years in this community with their developments. One more thing, Mayor. This has to stop. You cannot blacken the names or accuse people in the community of doing wrong. I'm glad you came here, and I, you're not, it, you have to know what it takes to become a municipality. It's not easy, and the attorney can tell you. It's very complicated, but don't come. Yes, it is, sir. Mrs. Yes, it is, but do Ms. not Perch, come would you please address make, the board here, please? And make bad accusations about our citizens and our commissioners unless you've got the proof. Get to defend ourselves. I mean, this is ridiculous. No, you, is anybody else who wants to speak? Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Bill Hickman. <clears throat> I live at 1049 Royal Burkdale Drive. That's in Cypress Run. Uh, I was on the board of CN and CN when we spent all the time uh, with the Pinellas County Commissioners getting the East Lake, uh, the East Lake overlay done. That overlay was done because Osmar tried to take in East Lake Woodlands and they were forcing East Lake Woodlands. We got involved in that to, to help stop that. And because of that, all the communities up and down East Lake, all the way from Curlew, all the way up to the county line, and all the way over to Lake Tarpon is involved in this protection. We ask that you honor what the Pinellas County Commissioners have already spent a lot of time on, <clears throat> and, excuse me, and have found to be, for the, for the neighborhoods, to be uh, congruent to what's there now. Redevelopment and development is important. I have lived in Cypress Run for 30 years, 
our own property there and lived there for 30 years, before Crescent Oaks and before Chateau de Lac, and watched it grow, never objections, because they followed the density rules. They followed the codes to get it done. We're not objecting to a man developing his property, but stay within the codes and work with the neighbors and, and, and honor what we have done and spent time doing up to now, but you all want to, you're, you're putting the cart before the horse because you want to approve the project, then you want to annex it, then you want to give him a variance, a density variance, and that's, and that's, not, uh, that's not kosher. Thank you. Thank you. Next person, please. Peter Delac is 514 Ashland Avenue. Um, you don't have to recuse yourself. I know I was accused of issues and I still made a decision, but what decision you make may determine how it's viewed afterwards. So that's just to let you know you're free to stay on unless there's something factually, substantially indicating otherwise. Let's read some facts. Site acreage 43.54, upland area 35.9, total wetland 7.34, other surface waters 0.3. So you got a little less than 36 acres of upland, yet you want to put 44 homes on it. Right there it's already less than one per acre. Secondly, I know it's not too visible, but all on the north side of the property, extensive wetlands. Uh, after having attended their organizational meeting, I drove up George Road. I had never been that far up there as long as I've lived in Tarpon. You go up a hill, you come up to a hill where it ends, to the right, huge drop off. I can't imagine the leveling and the dirt you're going to need to bring in just to level that property to put in homes. Secondly, as the attorney mentioned earlier, you can work on a development agreement concurrently with these other items. But I hate to see staff and Mark and everybody involved working diligently on a development agreement when chances are legislatively when this comes up for annexation and land use it may not pass and you're going to have them spending all this time doing things to try to accommodate something that quite probably is not going to go through not in this present form there's no comparable zoning for two acres that we have. Maybe if we changed and added a zoning to two acres to apply to properties in this area that have been rural, they used to be cattle land, used to be orange and grapefruit groves, which are now turning into subdivisions. So I'm not going to discuss site plans and zonings and annexations but I wish you would consider uh, what the downsize is going to be later because we know what happened with Walmart. We fought it for a long time. Everybody spent lots of money and it's still there. And they went to where they should be. And I have no problems with George and George wanting to develop the property, but do it in the smart process of the zoning or the land use that is currently available to them and work around what you have there. Those aren't $200,000, $300,000 homes that are going to be there. You put in the right home, you're going to sell them enough to make your money back. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other public comments on this item? I hear none. Thank you. Now uh, back to the uh, commission. Are there any uh, commission comments? Vice Mayor Terrapin. Sure. I'll say a few comments. Um, 
I mean, I've never heard so many uh, threats regarding an application that's not even transpired, really. I mean, y'all's facts regarding me and my relationship to Pioneer Homes and the Zoots family and the Stamus family is just ridiculous. I mean, have they been here 100 years? Has my family been here 100 years? Sure. But regarding me recusing myself or a conflict of interest, that's just false. So, you know, generally I'd say if you shoot at me, you better not miss. Commissioner Clark, do you have a comment? I've got a comment for the, or a question for the city attorney. Is there any legal issues to continue this at all? Um, you mean to set it aside for a next commission meeting for consideration? No, 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 I'm sorry. For extending this negotiation development agreement with the city manager and the uh, applicant here. No, there's, there's, there's nothing, and that's the only thing you've got before you tonight. You've heard a lot of issues about land use and zoning and <coughs> annexation. Uh, that's not before you tonight. There's only one thing before you tonight, and that's whether or not you want to give the city manager some additional time to, um, to have discussions with the uh, proposed developer. Okay. Uh, I understand there's a lot of passionate individuals that came and spoke tonight. This is the backup. I just took it out of my backup book to show you all. Uh, I have no information on this development, what the proposal is. I think Mr. Lack has had some type of site plan of some sort. I have received nothing along those lines. Uh, I know nothing about this property um, other than our city manager asked for an extension to, to, um, to the development agreement. So I don't have a problem with it because there's no other information to approve or no information to review right now. So in this standpoint, I have no problem extending another three months. Commissioner Cuba. No comment. Commissioner Donna. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, we're not far along in the process, but I do appreciate everybody that came out tonight and uh, both in support and opposition. Thank you guys for your time. Well, thank you. I also feel the same way. Uh, what we have before us is tonight is just to uh, extend the time for uh, the city manager to negotiate. We have no more information about what people talked about density and wetlands and building uh, density and, and again for any annexation none of that information is before us the only thing the, the uh, city manager is asking is for more time to uh, negotiate for an agreement with that i need a motion move to approve a three-month extension for further negotiations a roll call please mr donovan yes mr carr yes mr siever yes vice mayor terrapani yes merrill who's this yes thank you Thank you all for being here tonight. Okay, next item on the agenda is number 17, priority for installation of historic sign. Mr. LaCourse? Yes, one of the things we've talked about multiple times at our work session and meetings um, are historical signs. Um, I want to get ahead, on, ahead of things, as I know Commissioner Carr is very passionate about this. We've been talking to him. Obviously, at this time, you know, I don't have the money yet, and we haven't started, but I would like to get a head start on this and all i'm asking you is that probably it looks like we're going to have to do these things in probably phases of eight to ten at a time so what i want to try to get consensus so we could work on wordings type of signs and get these things back to you is if we could come to the kind of consensus of where we'd want to put the first eight or ten of these signs um again we've been talking about them for a long time um i like everybody else want to see some things going We've still got a lot of things, again, like I said, to do, selecting the sign and stuff. But I want to get talking if we've got some locations we can be consistent on to already be talking about the wording for the signs and all that. 
and then we can bring back to you some types, um, you know, including you see Karen Lemons. I've talked to some people. There's a certain type in there, but but I'm looking for the locations to do the research, get the information, and start the process so we can make that decision. So as the money becomes available, we can at least see eight to ten historic signs go up, and then follow after that with different phases and uh, continue to put historic signs around. There are many, many historic sites within the community. So I wanted to get the commission input in it. I've been closed um, Commissioner Carr's suggestions that he sent to me about some areas and would be interested in, in you adding some to the list or if we can come to a consensus for these, which, which ones uh, you'd like to include for us to start the research and working on. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank Commissioner Carr for providing to us the uh, his suggested priority list for historical science. Thanks for doing that, Commissioner. Uh, I agree that uh, all these locations are very important. I'd like to add a couple more places. One will be uh, the Union Academy on Martin Luther King. And I want to thank Mrs. Depps for bringing it to my attention. She's in the audience. Also, we have many uh, sponge packing um, houses throughout the city. And uh, some of them, I, I think it's one or two still operational, all the others are not. But we need to uh, find those places and identify and, and get the history with that. I'd like to see the uh, Historical Society to work with this project to ensure that the information that we have is correct because there's nothing you know, other worse than uh, having a uh, sign and the information to be incorrect. So I... Uh, I'd like to see the Historical Society to be involved with that. Uh, Mr. LeCuerz, you already answered one of my questions that uh, you can do eight to ten signs at a time. And based on what you and I would discuss, it's, it's going to cost around uh, eighteen to $2,000 a piece, correct? Probably probably somewhere, depending on the type of sign, we were thinking more of the 2000 2500 But again, mm -hmm. I know we're going to want a good historical sign to put these on so i'm i'm figuring somewhere around the 2500 yeah. piece being that we have more locations than 10, 10 more than 10 locations i think we ought to get uh one or two in downtown some at the sponge docks area some of the uh but also to include the uh, the union academy and some of the uh, the sponge packing houses so that's all i have vice mayor Carapan. Uh, I would just say that, you know, based on Ms. Lemon's uh, memo regarding some of the uh, disputes is not the right word, but just conflicting interests on where people think that these historical signs should go, that we initially start with areas of town that we can directly control as it relates to the property that we own and go from there. Yeah. I don't and, have any specific thoughts Yeah, that. and also we need to identify the locations and see if the signs are going to be placed without on the building or on the pole. Yeah, I mean, difference. whatever it is, yeah, I would yeah. just say that it uh, stay consistent, you know, as we continue to discuss our sign code. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, if we're going to do 10 sites, I wouldn't want the sign placement and the sign design to look different in different times. Yeah. Just when you surprised, waiting. Thanks, Mayor. <laughs> um, thank you for um, City Manager, and I know there's other commissioners that have brought this up. I know. Commissioner Seabird's had some interest in this in the past as well, and the mayor. Uh, so this is obviously a board decision. It's not just my idea. This is something that's been brought up multiple times by other commissioners in the past as well. So I want to make sure I don't take credit for this alone. Um, it, the sites that I proposed uh, <coughs> pertaining were the following, just for the record. Uh, the golf course, um, it being one of the oldest golf courses in uh, Tampa Bay and one of the first ones to be developed. <laughs> Sunset Beach, again, this is, these are properties that are primarily owned by the city of Tarpon Springs, so there's not a whole lot of permission that needs to be asked to put these up. Uh, Sunset Beach, one pertaining to the Anklet Lighthouse history, one pertaining to the history of Sunset Beach. City Hall, where the old uh, junior high and high school was. Uh, Spring Bayou, Craig Park, the Waterworks Building in downtown, the Cultural Center in downtown, the train station in downtown, and the Safford House. Uh, also proposed two additional signs that would go in the historic district and also in the Greektown historic designation area. Uh, and I think the mayor had a great idea about the Union Academy. I know that was brought up in the backup as well. But I wouldn't be able to support to delay this any longer. I think the board should move forward. I would recommend the board to move forward with this. Um, 
to get the first 10 signs out uh, amongst the community. There's a lot of great information and a lot of history. I think that should be out there uh, amongst the, the community to read as tourists visit our town, as residents and new residents uh, move into our town to learn more about the history. I know when I visit other communities across the South that these are items that are really, I am uh, gravitated towards to read um, about these items and about the history of the towns that I visit. Um, one of the things that we could do too as a city um, with these signs is we could add a QR code. And what that is is a, a code that is basically a barcode that you could scan with your phone and it could pull up to a website. And it could be linked to a city website that has a history of this property um, within the city. And then it has all the other properties as well listed on this website. Um, so if you're at one site, you could go ahead and scan it and then it could bring up and it could ping a map or some sort that you can see all the different historic sites as well. Um, with that, I also had um, Trish print up uh, some items that I saw on Facebook uh, this past week at a local community here in Safety Harbor. Um, this is a, a second item that I think would do well uh, within the city of Tarpon Springs as well. These, are, these would be actually smaller signs that I would like to propose as well that would go in front of some of the historic houses, um, some of the historic areas if the property owners were interested, um, that talks about the history of the house when the house was built. Uh, who owned it initially, who built it initially, um, and some history of what the house was in the past uh, and where it's at today. So I think there's an opportunity there to really, um, there's a lot of people that are interested in our historic area, but there's not a whole lot of information publicly. And when people are walking around the bayous, when they're walking throughout the town, or when they're driving throughout the town, to be able to really capture that history um, that they're looking for. So I, I believe these two projects would, would capture that and help with this, but I would like to with emphasis, um, suggest that we move forward tonight on the sites. Um, based on the list, uh, the Greek church is not part of uh, city property. Uh, I would like to see one there as well. Um, and the old jail at the Silver King is not city property as well. So um, I would suggest going ahead and removing those ones, but keeping them on the list for future. And then adding the Union Academy on MLK um, to fall into the two districts that I mentioned before with the historic district and the Greek town district. So I think it's a pretty good list. It's all on city-owned property, and uh, there shouldn't be much, there shouldn't really be any issues with private property or anything along those lines. Go ahead and move forward with this project. Mr. Siever? And I'm sorry if I have to step out. Are my you wife's, finished? Oh. Yeah, my wife's at the emergency with the dog, so, and she has my baby, so I have to step out in a, in a minute to take a phone call, so I apologize for stepping out. Commissioner Siever? Yes. Um, Thank you for bringing this forward, um, Commissioner Carr. Um, this kind of goes along with something that, yeah, we have talked about for a long time, and I've discussed as far as like a self-marked uh, path between the docks and, and uh, downtown where we would include some of these historical uh, markers. And I understand starting with city properties, uh, which probably would be a good way to start. Um, but my vision had always been to also include uh, markers like at the, at the bayou, at, uh, at Safford House, which we have, and, and some kind of path that takes one from downtown to, to the sponge docks and, and back. And I know that we have the app um, that is not currently used uh, as much as it probably should be, but, um, but this is the kind of marker I was thinking, too, uh, for, for that kind of uh, uh, project. Um, I'm confused a little bit between these markers and these houses that we have, and Commissioner Carr is not here, uh, these suggestions that he has here for markers on houses, is this something that he wanted to do at a later date? I or? think this is another, that's another phase to do. Okay, because... Tonight the agenda item is the historic signs. Because okay. This is something we can do in the private property and homes. Um, you know, I've seen these and been down and looked at those in Safety Harbor. Because so. I know Karen is working on on signs also, historical signs for buildings, and I'm confused about, you know, which signs he's talking about as opposed to the uh, signs that's, that Karen's been working on for, for buildings uh, that are historic buildings and, and houses. Uh, but I, I do agree that we need to start, and I don't know what the process is next as far as deciding what type of sign or uh, who's going to design them? Is this something you're going to work with historical? Yeah, as society? you see, you saw you saw one example in the back of the carriage. Oh, is that the kind old of what you're suggesting? Design. That's one example, but we'll look at a few more and bring it. We just want to start on the wording, and if, if this list, again, 
a criteria that's on city property, which makes it easier and faster. Um, the sign types, there's, there's probably a couple, two or three, but we, while we're getting started in the wording, we can have the sign types. And uh, again, we need to work budgetary also because we have to come up you know, with the budget for them. Our next but, budget. But, to start uh, this? Well, I, again, I'm, I'm hoping there's no more emergencies or things right. happen where, you know, I'm hoping that there's some money left over as we end this budget cycle um, that we can begin. That's why I want to get a jump on the wording and all the things that may t take a little time on um, whether it's Karen working with the Historical Society or others, um, get that wording back. Do you have the types? And so again, so we can, you know, try to move faster and see something in the ground visible that we can see. So. So you'll be I think back this is a good start of places that aren't going to bog me down with trying to get permission or other things. So, so you can come back to us with what we can start with, how many signs. Maybe we can only do two or three at this time and then move on with the next yeah. budget uh, year for, for more of them. And uh, I say this list that we have now is not big enough that we'll do all of them. And then if we can only do eight or ten, you know, I'll bring back my suggestions and you can move one in and out like you want and stuff. But I can get started on all of these um, to get the wordings for and start signs and, and start that tomorrow. Okay, I think it's a good start. Commissioner Donovan. Um, real quick, uh, Commissioner Farr is back. I don't want to uh, ask your question for you. I just want to know what the question was about. Yeah. Um, the question was, you, you gave us this as backup too, but I was just wondering how this compares to the signs that we've uh, asked Karen to work on for buildings and uh, like historical buildings and, and houses because yeah, I know question. that we've have asked her to, to work on, on signage as well. So how, how, how does that come in, this come into play here? Okay, to answer, Mayor? Sure. Yeah. Um, thanks for asking that question, Commissioner Siever. Uh, my understanding is that she was working on the signs for the properties in downtown on the buildings and not at the houses within the historic district. I could be wrong, but that was my understanding. So this would be an additional item that would be if the property owners in the historic district were interested in adding these to the property, to show the history of their house, um, where people that, I mean, there's a lot of people that walk the neighborhoods, right? And we're all familiar with that, um, that they could see that and they could also go on to the website to, to see all the different houses, what the history of the house is linked to the historic district too. So would this be then the property owner's responsibility to pay for the sign? And no, it would property? be a, it would be a project with the city um, where it would be a partnership with the city saying the city would help provide the sign. These signs are a lot obviously is a lot less expensive than the ones that we're talking about with the big historic signs that are cast metal. Um, this is more of like an aluminum type sign with a design to it, uh, but I would expect that it would be a partnership between the city and private, pri private property. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, we're so lucky to live in what I believe to be the most historic town in Pinellas County. Um, so I understand the fact that some signs are better than no signs, um, but there just needs to be some sort or some form of criteria to justify the sites that we choose. Um, so I don't mind if it's both objective and subjective criteria. I just want to make sure we have an answer when people ask, you know, why why this property? Why did you choose this property? So just some things um, to consider is the actual age of the property. Uh, the purpose that the property served. Um, we can go into the overall significance to our town or, or perhaps uh, different cultures in our town. Um, and then also the areas of the community, just making sure that it's balanced, you know, we're not all clustering them in, in one area, um, especially for the beginning, because I do think that these, uh, these signs are a great idea. I just want to make sure um, that the public fully understands what we're going for. Uh, also, I think it's a good idea to work with the, the uh, historical society as the historical society, um, I've I've been in there, you know, uh, a bunch of times in the past. They all really know their stuff. I think we can lean on them to uh, help us with with the criteria, but also with the selection of the sites that might be something to consider. Um, and I'm fine with the logic of going with the properties that we own first. Um, I'm I'm okay with that. That makes sense to me. Um, but we can also add in the criteria to apply to those properties as well. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you guys are willing to, you know, uh, spitball some criteria tonight, I'd be willing to uh, explore that dialogue. But I also understand if you guys want to wait, maybe lean on the Historical Society for further criteria. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, again, I, uh, I like to, uh, I, I agree with the, uh, the concept to, uh, to start with the city-owned properties, I think makes sense. Uh, and also to include the Union Academy and later 
we can go back and edit the uh, the sponge packing houses and the Greek church, all that. But um, I think it's very uh, important that we get the uh, historical society involved to make sure that the uh, the information that we have is correct and it should be validated by several people. To make sure that whatever we have there is co you know it, it, it's a fact and it's right. Uh, with that, I'd like to go to uh, the public comments. Uh, Tommy Frayne, 1671 Autumnwood Street, Tarpon Springs. Um, just wanted to commend Commissioner Carr and all the commissioners uh, and mayor for taking this item up. Um, I don't want to get you know too long into it, but I definitely think uh, some of these other ideas for the houses and the buildings is really important because um, there's some of those things that we talk about direct aid to the businesses. You know, when we talk about what was on the ballot for tax incentives, this is something that we can do. That's a public good that funds you know, uh, an attraction for people to come here and gives them a reason to come here and stay a little bit longer and get into the businesses. Oh, excuse me. Uh, you know, we see it with, um, you know, obviously bigger cities like St. Augustine, but I even noted I was up in somewhere in Northeast Florida, I forget this, <laughs> the town name, but all in the downtown, every building had a little plaque, a little bit of history about what was there. Um, and we spent a little bit more time in that town than we probably would have otherwise. So um, Commissioner Sieber's comment about the connection down, um, you know, there's a lot of pictures that I'm sure the Historical Society has. I've been working on a little personal historical project um, that, so I've done a lot of research on it as well um, in town. So, you know, I, th I think there's a lot of resources out there and I commend the city for finally, you know, taking a hold and getting some of these historical markers up. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Tina Bukovales, 115 Athens Street. I do want to commend uh, the commission on their enthusiasm and wanting to push this forward, but I do want to stress there was a committee that was formed uh, because there was not consensus about this. We met last week and nobody agreed that it was time to move forward. Um, the list that, um, and pretty much everyone agreed that the list that was, well, no, I can't say that. Uh, because the list wasn't available until recently. I saw the list the other day uh, that uh, Commissioner Carr put forward. I'm sorry, he's not here right now. And it certainly was mostly government properties, city-owned properties, but they were largely fo focused on the history of the community that was Anglo-American, Victorian, and formal our government history. Unfortunately, I don't believe that that is representative of a lot of the other important components of our city and that we could do better. In this era in which most government agencies and semi-government agencies are looking to have their actions align and be informed by standards of equity and diversity, it's disappointing to see that we don't have that here. I'm glad that Mayor Alahuzos has suggested Union Academy, which should be there, absolutely, and other African-American African sites like the First Church in Tarpon Springs. Um, and also many uh, sites that were of the Greek community, which was the largest population element. I sent all of you a copy of that list of the sponging families to stress the point of how important that was to the community. But there, other than the church, there was nothing on that list that was suggested. So, as I said, none of us believed it's time to move forward without greater public input into this. And uh, I really don't, and I understand that you need to start somewhere, and you wanna start just with government uh, buildings, owned buildings, but, um, None of us on that committee believe that was the place to start. Thank you. Mayor? I'll come back to you. Annie Dabbs, 803 South Distance Avenue. Uh, I just want to add about the um, program um, it's going to be very difficult. You know, it is very difficult to pick 10 from Thompson Springs. But what I'd like to see 
is that all of Toppen Springs be represented. That means there won't be three in one area and none in another area. And I do think we should start with the city on property businesses first. That may not satisfy everybody, but we're gonna have to start somewhere. And I do hope all of Toppen Springs could be included in this with just one in each area as pops, if possible. Thank you. Thank you. Anita Prost, 901 Bayshore Drive. If you look in Southern Living, they've gone through Southern uh, communities and it shows the signs they've used, their criteria, and we can build something from that. Also, the Pinehouse County Historical Society has done a lot of work, as has Clearwater, Tampa, and St. Pete. And they've had a program which has been very successful in going through the neighborhoods, especially Tampa. They had a program last night after the beautiful Tarpon Springs presentation on WEDU, which was magnificent. Uh, they talked about Ybor City and Tampa, and their program has been very successful. I don't usually like to say, let's go to other communities and, and follow them, because we are Tarpon Springs, but I think they have information which will help us organize and do it right, and do it right. And it takes not just one year, six months or one year, it takes time, sometimes, like they said on in Tampa, two to three years to get all the uh, information together and pick the buildings and get it right. So before we have a war, because there's one brewing now that's gonna come before the Historic Preservation Board, that uh, we get it right and everyone is satisfied because we have so many beautiful homes and we lost Captain Hope's house. That was torn down. It used to be where the condos are by uh, where Angel's Market used to be the condos down off of Athens Street. And Captain Hope was very uh, important to Tarpon in his work, and it was torn down because he couldn't get the city to try to save it or go for a grant, and the property was sold. So we've lost quite a few, but if we take our time and do it right, I think we'll come out way ahead of St. Augustine, uh, Ybor City, and a lot of these communities, and because we've got so much to offer. So let's just take our time to see where we can go with it and follow with the program. Coast of Addy, Kyotas, 538 West Cedar Street, Tarpon Springs. Um, I was at the committee or at the meeting that occurred the other day with Karen Lemons that invited me and several other residents. And I think it's a good start with what you're doing with the government buildings. Um, the only thing, the, one of the good things that came out, although it wasn't good, but it was a positive thing that demonstrated that more work needed to be done. There was a lack of buildings in the Union Academy neighborhood that are identified as historic or even culturally significant buildings. And that's gonna take some time to identify those buildings. So I would really like to see not just what you do tonight approved, but also give some direction to establish this as a program so that when it's time next year to come forward, there's some new buildings such as other buildings in the Union Academy neighborhood that would be part of this list. There were six to 700 historic buildings in Tarpon Springs. Um, obviously, not all of them are gonna get signs. That'd be a very, very expensive thing, but and I agree with Commissioner Donovan's comment uh, as far as establishing the criteria which are significant to the city, to its heritage, to its culture. And I don't think it's gonna be an easy thing of just seeing this once a year pop up by recommendations by a commissioner uh, on what building should be done. I think there ought to be an established program uh, to continue this, uh, to guarantee its continuance so that it doesn't fizzle out in two or three years and we wind up with um, 20 or 30 buildings marked, but yet there's another 100 that are very significant to Tarpon Springs as well. So that was my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comment? Thank you. 
I uh, just have a couple things, Mayor, to add. One is a, just some clarification regarding this committee. Um, my understanding is based on this memo and not, not necessarily forming a committee formally via this board and putting members on this committee. It was basically just a meeting that was had. Karen Lemon called some. Karen Lemons called some people, but it was no formal committee. Is no. that correct? For the second time this week, as a result of an email, I gave you an answer. So, in a public meeting, so everybody can know, there is no committee. This committee thing is, I won't comment on where it was, how it was made up, but it was Karen Lemons trying to trying to get citizen input before we came forward tonight. And there's more citizen input that Karen's going to get before tonight. But there is no committee that the city has any involvement. If it is, it's self-created outside of what Karen Lemons was doing. So for the second time, there is no committee. That's all I need to know. In addition to that, I don't feel that, I think it's obviously important to have representation of the community as a whole as it relates to the Union Academy neighborhood, you know, Greek town, Anglo, whatever you want to call it. However, I think it's important to note that just uh, that the African-American contributions in this community didn't just uh, aren't limited to the Union Academy neighborhood. I mean, there are contributions that were made all over town that are significant. Uh, one that I can think of, which I saw on the Real Tarpon Instagram, is the church on the corner of uh, Pine and Safford Avenue. I think it's done by somebody in the uh, – or Pine and uh, Alternate 19. 19. Right. That was a African-American church, right? Yeah. Beautiful church behind the uh, behind the tin siding or whatever there's on there now. But, I mean, that's – to me, that's a significant building in a significant location. It's not in the Union Academy neighborhood. So just because it's not in the Union Academy neighborhood doesn't mean that it's, you know, a possible site. So, I mean, that's the only thing that I would mention is that there's, you know, areas all over town that have historical significance that reflect of, uh, you know, the African-American community or the Greek community that's not particularly in that demographic of town. So. Any other comments? Uh, yes, I, I think the you know the main point is to decide whether we're going to start. Uh, and we've been talking. I know I've been talking about this for six years. So I think this is a good start. And starting with our our, our city-owned buildings, uh, you know, is a good start because with over 600 locations, we can't do that in any uh, small amount of time. Uh, and I I also had a question about the committee because um, are we thinking of forming a committee or or uh, are we considering this or who will be identified to work on this project uh, in the future with uh, considering um, other areas that we, we include these, um, these markers or, or signs. So that was kind of a question I had. Uh, but I, I do want to stress that we go on with this tonight mm -hmm. is how I feel. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think we need to start from someplace. I need, you know, uh, Select ten sites from, uh, and and have the uh, the uh, the city-owned properties. This is a good start, and then we move on to different places. Uh, <coughs> and again, I do like to see, excuse me, but I do like to see the historical society to be involved with the uh, with the process, and they have a lot of good information that we need to share with us. We can do a lot of things that were said tonight, and, um, yeah. um, but. First of all, I think the good thing about this list that we've got and that's been added is I don't think anybody, a lot of us who've been around here a long time, can say that those sites we have there don't meet all the criteria that Commissioner Donovan said. His criteria was good. The places we see on this list, um, I don't think there's any. And I'd like to hear now if any of this list you dispute that they have the different criteria as far as, as, far as the age overall. These, these are all areas that are prominent in this town. So... I don't think we really have any argument on this list that some of these don't meet a criteria, and for the purpose of tonight, the criteria Commissioner Donovan used, I think, I think there's no argument of any of these sites that they would they would fit that criteria. So that's why it'd be a good site. I'll get the information on all of them. We're probably at 12, 13, 14, but you know, if it gets down to the point and the money, then we'll do the other ones. But we'll work on all of these that are said tonight and. Uh, I say move forward, and then in the meantime, we can work on all the other things that were talked about tonight, but at least we can get this going and back to you. And on, on this list, make sure you include the, uh, uh, the Union Academy. I said every, everything yeah. that's included on the list that was said tonight. Good? Yeah. Uh, no, I just um, 
I agree. I think everything on that list would probably meet whatever criteria we came up with. I just don't want to select the sites before we establish some sort of criteria. Um, so maybe I'm, I'm thinking that after this meeting, we can start working on the background, all those sites, verifying the historical accuracy and that kind of stuff. And then maybe if the board would allow by next meeting, um, you know, I could come forward again, taken from different magazines, different committees. I could talk to the Historical Society and maybe get some more concrete because I was just kind of spitballing ideas about, you know, what type of criteria might be good. Um, and I can make an agenda item at our next um, actual board meeting and we can just discuss some of the criteria that we want to include. So you can get to work on all the historical stuff and, and justifying them, um, but I still think it's necessary to establish criteria for it that's actually written. So you're suggesting that you come up with the criteria? Is that what you're saying? Not me, myself. Um, I would work with city staff on it. If city staff wanted to bring it forward instead of me, I mean, you know, the, I mean, the more the merrier. That's what we're manager for, you know? Yeah, sure. I mean, if... if well, if, I like the four you mentioned. If you got any more to the four you mentioned, I think, because in that case, I think everything on this list meets, the, meets those criteria. So, okay. I just want to establish some. So should, would I just e email. I'll just email you, and we yep. can actually put out an official criteria list. I just want to make sure that we we can justify all the sites that are selected. Sure. And again, I'm not saying that these aren't justifiable. I'm just saying I want to point to why you know why these ten or eleven, whatever, sure. whatever we end up doing. Sure. Well, is this an item that we need to uh, we need a motion? No, on no, no. We're just looking for direction. Just consensus. I'm looking for direction. Everybody agree with that? Uh, Commissioner Carter's not here, but I'm sure he agrees. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteering. <laughs> well, next item in the agenda is number 18, is to approve termination of Lions Club Creative Outdoor Bench Sign Agreement. So, I so we have discovered that there is a almost 40 year old agreement with Lions Club about bench signs. Um, I won't comment on the way the agreement was written, but obviously it's an agreement that rolls over every five years without, without anything. It just keeps rolling over and rolling over and rolled over so much I don't think anybody in the city knew that it even existed until we're talking about the sign code. Um, there's a request that, that some different things be done. So what I'm asking for tonight is, and because of the way it's written, because you know it's got some legal elements involved to authorize myself and the city attorney to write the letter officially to the Lions Club and the organization Creative Outdoors that's involved in this thing. The importance of the timing is that this next five years is gonna start again October 3rd. So regardless of what we do with the sign ordinance and if we allow these, don't allow these, um, there needs to be a new agreement, not this archaic 40 year agreement that's gone past. So in the, in, in the least, um, at least we wanna do is, is let them know that we are terminating that agreement and then we'll either work on another agreement or when if we decide on the sign code that they're not gonna be allowable anymore, then then that would solve that. But the authority tonight, so we, we meet some time before the beginning of October to end this 40-year agreement. It's clued in your packet. You can see how old and archaic it is. So we would never renew knowing about it and go on with this agreement. So at least it gives us time, if it's the wishes of the board, to have the attorney write a proper agreement. Um, so that's what I'm asking for tonight, for us to be able to notify and see the attorney to help write a legal letter to them uh, terminating this previous uh, uh, agreement so it doesn't roll over again in October. My recollection is, and obviously we're down to two members on the board right now, but my recollection is the reason that this came up is because within our discussions regarding the sign code, it was fleshed out that the board basically did not desire to have uh, bench signs anymore. Yes. So, I mean, unless something's changed, within the from the board in between then and now I mean my sense is the direction would be to terminate the agreement yeah um, but I mean obviously I'm not speaking for everybody but that's just my recollection yes and that's what we do we terminate the agreement and then as we get back into the sign I mean 
you know, we would decide what we're going to do, but we need to terminate this one um, again before the beginning of October. So that's all I'm asking, let her terminate it, and then we'll determine what the next step is, whether it's not to or to talk about a new agreement. So that's what I'm asking for tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, to say the advertising game has changed in 40 years since this agreement is probably uh, a big understatement. I mean, you got to think just the amount of web ads and, and websites and all sorts of different ways that businesses can, can get involved now. Um, my thoughts haven't changed since that work session meeting. I'd be in favor of uh, the termination of this agreement from 40 years ago. Yeah. Well, the attend at that time for Lions Club was to provide the uh, convenience and accommodation for the people. It was probably working okay now, but uh, what has become a nuisance to me, and it's not a pleasure sight to see that, and I think it's time to terminate that. Commissioner Sieber? I don't no, know if you spoke when I was gone. No comments. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Are there any public comments on this item? I hear none. I need a uh, motion. Uh, move to direct the city manager to terminate the Lions Club agreement. Second. Second. Okay. And roll call. Commissioner <clears throat> Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Seaburn? Yes. Vice Mayor Chair Fanning? Yes. Merrill Hussis? Yes. Well, that concludes the agenda tonight, and we'll go to staff comments. Chief? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. City Attorney? Um, no, you addressed the issues that I needed to address tonight. Thank you. City Manager? Deputy City Clerk, and thank you for being here with us tonight. No, no comment. Thank you. Vice Mayor Terrapin. No comments, Mayor. Commissioner Steve. No comments. <laughs> Commissioner Donovan. Nothing for me. Well, I got some announcements to make. Um, Thursday, August 15th, we have the uh, Sunset Beach. That starts at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, August 2nd, we have the uh, first Friday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Tarpon Avenue. Saturday, August 10, we have the Hippie Fest from 2.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. on Sponge Dogs. I also like to announce that I will be leaving tomorrow for Greece to visit the sister city Kalimnos with Christopher Steele, who will be visiting our sister city Kalimnos, Halki, and Simi to capture and paint images for a project that will feature Tarpa Springs. Also, on this visit, uh, Mr. Jason Dunkel, the president of uh, and CEO of our hospital is going to be coming down to have a discussion with the administrators of the Hospital of Kalimnos to create to create a partnership between the the, the hospital of Tarpa Springs and the uh, uh, hospital in Kalimnos. So I think this is something that never happened before, and I'm looking forward to be there with them uh, on August 19. Colonel Andrew Kelly, the uh, district commander of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, will be visiting Tarpa Springs, and I will be uh, will be taking a boat ride, and we'll have a lunch to uh, to discuss the Anklo River dredging project. Uh, Congressman Billy Rackus is going to be also with us. Uh, I meant um, Colonel um, Kelly while I was attending the Hurricane Conference, hosted by uh, Senator Scott, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, to have him here in Tarpa Springs and to uh, take him over on Anklo River and tell him how important it is to our uh, local economy. Well, that concludes the regular session meeting and it's adjourned at 9.28 p.m.